to like mean something like it has to have purpose that people will say and i see it a lot on like twitter mm-hmm. it's like you know oh you have to don't let your player characters die to um you know stupid little oh things. you have to don't let your player characters die oh look the audio is coming through nathan yeah i know i fixed things i finally I Anyways, finally but, did yeah, that. that's that's that argument that what people always have on, on like Twitter about all the things like yeah you gotta, gotta let your players have a, a meaningful death and I'm like man not every death is meaningful sometimes you just get mugged or die <laughs> it doesn't have to be from a random encounter it just doesn't have to be super meaningful but that's me I don't know you're free to disagree if you'd like <laughs> uh okay. <laughs> I guess I'll disagree <laughs> for mm-hmm. random reasons. <laughs> no real reason. Just feel like it. Um, do player character... No, I mean, I guess I guess a lot of people just oh, die no without any... All over my desk. I think Nathan died, man. No, no. What do you mean, Nathan died? Nathan's not there? Of course Nathan's not there. Of course Nathan's not there. Why would Nathan be there? That oh, would make man. everything work fine. And why would we want that? Oh, Nathan's in the audio on the on the Discord now. How about now? Oh weird. Oh hey, there you are. Oh my god. I, I could hear you on the disc on the um yeah. on the on the, Twitch. On the chat yep. in the Yep. Uh Twitch rather. Yeah. But we couldn't hear you on Discord. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, oh, and hey, look, we finally got the graphics back up too. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. ask, I was like, did you break that too? No, it was on there, but it only wanted to capture the audio from the from the window, not the actual window itself. <laughs> I don't, I don't friggin' know, man. You know what? I think I figured out what the problem was. Is um the act the you? audio the audio settings on Discord itself. For some reason, oh. got changed. I don't know That's why. I, I have no freaking That's clue weird. why. Anywho, solved that problem or, eventually. Worst, worst case scenario, I could have hosted the uh, stream. Yeah. On my end. That was my backup plan. If yeah. nothing and worked. I, I have it set up to uh, two different profiles now on OBS, so I can record <coughs> and stream to Delcast, and I can do it on to my own. Yeah. Because. I have my own Twitch channel also. Right I was on. meaning to ask you about that. How did your first stream... Alex had his first stream on his own channel. I had nobody join me, which that's, is fine. That sounds about right. I was right. talking to the air. <laughs> you were talking to air. Hey, you know what? I air was, is I great. I was playing RimWorld because RimWorld's fun. Mm-hmm. Um... 20 minutes after, I was like, all right, it's been three hours on my stream. I'm talking to nobody. I'm going to go. See you guys later. <laughs> 20 yeah. minutes after my stream ended, I was still playing for a few, and then all my columns died. Oh. <laughs> that would have been good to have. On so there. the fun stuff that happened didn't happen on the stream. Yeah. Well, you see, here's what you, here's what you can always do is uh, even if you Hilarious. don't have anybody join you on stream, what you can do is you can just use it to kind of like record your game. Uh, so that I like when, died again. when you uh, get possibly, yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. So, uh, so yeah, twenty minutes after I was like doing this thing, and I was like, oh, these elephants out there keep eating my food. Mm-hmm. Elephants yeah. are a lot of meat. I need more meat. They're mm-hmm. eating all my plants. Let's kill the elephants. Attacked one. Oh, it God. got mad. Yeah, no kidding. Apparently, when it got <laughs> mad, the rest of the herd of elephants got mad of course also <laughs> so uh, they downed the one person outside that was hunting them i tried to rescue them and they downed that person tried to rescue them both <laughs> they got into my base mm-hmm. great they could not get back out because the doors is closed behind them and elephants can't open doors oh not hey yet. you know they ended up killing or downing all five of my colonists, killing my panther, all of my baby chickens. Um, what? 
And then just wrecking the place up, and then, like, three of them were, like, dying inside from their gunshot wounds. I'm dying inside just hearing about and this. Oh, wow. Mysterious Stranger in Black that came, kind of like the, I think it's just a riff on the Mysterious uh, Stranger from Fallout. Mm -hmm. uh, he came in and was like, oh, cool, I'll see if you can save my guys. And he came in and tried to rescue him and got one to a medical bed but couldn't treat him because the elephants were still in the in the base. They murder hoboed him, too. Uh so yeah, all my all, they, no, all no. Just, they all just got beaten to death by elephants and killed. What? So what that was the game? end of that colony. What is this game? <laughs> Good job. What? I'm not the best at RimWorld. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what? At least you had fun and you it's... have a memorable memorable elephant story. Yeah, it's a really it's a really fun game if you've ever played it. Um, no, I didn't. It's Look really it good at generating story, I guess. Um, when did this it's come really out? Weird. It's it's really fun though, but I'm bad at it. I'm so bad at it. When when did this come out? Rimworld. Yeah. Uh, when did the game come out? Let me see. I'll check it out. The because for some reason it feels like I just. Found out no, they just case. had an update. They just went oh. to 1.1, so it's officially out of beta. Mm. Um, see if I can find the store page. But yeah, if uh, you, uh... it came out in 2018. Oh, okay. So not not that long ago. Yeah. the The thing is, yeah, if you uh, record your games, uh, using the stream. Then if something really great happens, you can just make that a clip. And yeah, then... it was right after the stream. See, that's the thing. You you, <laughs> the stream cut off just a little too soon. I hate when that happens. Yeah, yeah no, it was me having played for three hours and going, all right, I'm gonna stop streaming now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's <laughs> for the audience of zero. I've got <laughs> for the audience of zero. Yeah. Now, is, do you have the settings on that I was talking about so that uh, it will keep them on file for, like, a month or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. I do. So you can always I... tool around with that, too, because people can uh, access it afterward if yeah, they wanted I, to. Yeah, I know. Figure, figure something out. Yeah. I'll figure something out. And you also have the Discord, so you could also... Um, and the other thing that I did was, uh, I changed some of our hosting settings around to make sure that you were on there. Um, okay. so, so like, cool. cause I figured, well, it kind of makes sense that like our top hosting channel would be your channel. <laughs> um, cause, cause you're one of the hosts and then like the next one down would be the one I do like a live play on. <laughs> cause you know, it's, it's you, directly. When's the last time you've done a live play? Uh, pretty much every week. Uh, I'm in one, but oh, I'm, I'm in the one. That's what you meant. I yeah. Meant like a video game. I didn't know you meant the D&D. No, I did say, though, that, like, maybe once I get a little bit more uh, funding security, I might try to get, like, a real gaming rig together. There and, you go. And once I do that... Um, I would absolutely love to be able to stream and interact and, and do games. I actually have some that are even on my GOG library. Like, uh, I have a Witcher Enhanced Edition, and I've never played it. I have it. Oh. I have it on my library. I just, I'm kind of, I think my computer can play it, but not play and stream it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Because that takes a lot of memory in order to do. It was well, also processor helps too. The processor helps too. And there was a, a point where I wanted to just see if I could keep the OBS open and uh, record because I started playing Rogue Legacy. And I wanted to just record that while I was doing it. And yeah, it slows the game down considerably. Uh, just yeah. from the processor trying to do both of those things at the same time time um yeah. and god help you if you have to do vr oh my god oh, yeah i'm actually uh i just ordered a new motherboard and processor for this oh yeah so my taxes back 
So perfect. That's what I'm doing this year is upgrading my motherboard and processor. The motherboard is being upgraded to have its processor because it won't otherwise. Oh yeah. Um. So I'm going. I think I'm doing an i7. So I'm getting about a fifty percent performance enhancement to my computer. Oh wow. Nice. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So that's gonna be nice. I think. Uh, from there, the next place that I would end up going would be an i9. But uh, I guess the difference. I had my friend Tyler looking at it with me because he's better with computers than I am. I'm really not the best with all the tech stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I pretend that that I am, but that stuff I'm not good at. Uh, I think the difference between the i7 and the i9 would have been like 1% for me. Oh, yeah. And like $200. So I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. if it's only like 1%, then we're not doing that. Even if it was 10%, then we're not doing that. Right. Right. That's that. So where so where it's like a fifty percent performance enhancement and processing speed from what I've got now to the i seven. It's like yeah, that sounds perfect. You were already doing golf with your friends at like three hundred frames a second. <laughs> yeah, but that game is super easy and also super not intensive on processing. Uh, you haven't met my computer. I you have a Mac, sir. I have a I have a I don't have a great computer for audio video, which is the thing that I basically do solely on this thing, computer. <laughs> That's kind of the problem. Um, that no, the problem is, is that the way they built the Mac Mini, uh, it doesn't really allow you to do any kind of upgrades or changes. Uh, That's because it's Mac. You can't really upgrade Macs. They're like, hey, we built a computer, and you get what's in it. <laughs> well, once upon a time, like when I had the old iMacs, like the the original ones, you could you could add uh, memory and stuff to it. But this one, they decided, hey, you know what? Let's solder the memory card directly to the motherboard. Well, like, it's a, it's essentially a laptop, right? Uh, no, it's a little tiny box oh. that hooks to a monitor. Oh. So, yeah, it should it should be that you just open it up and and change it around. It's like basically a a, a hard drive. It it's basically like an oversized thumb drive, like a big. It's like a big thumb drive that's a computer. You could think of it that way, um, and it works fine until you have to like do things that require a lot of processing power. And of course, I decided to do a lot of things that require a lot of processing power. <laughs> but, of course, I found out something uh, recently because I was working on a video, uh, a bigger video project that hopefully will be releasing this next week. And um, I was trying to figure out why I had so much... Like, like, it basically said, hey, your storage drive is almost full, so you should think about like getting rid of some files and stuff. And I was like, okay, this is insane. Why does it take up so much memory to do stuff in um, in uh, Final Cut Pro? And so I, I looked online to find out what the problem might be. Because, like, literally, just to give you an idea of what my problem is, I have a terabyte drive. Like, I can, I can do... I, I have a 1 TB for storage. And my libraries for Final Cut Pro... We're taking up something like 500 to 600 gigabytes. Um, no idea why. Uh, actually, I guess it was closer to seven by that point. And I was like, okay, that's insane. I don't know why it's using up so much. And it felt like it kept growing as I was thinking about it. And so here's a handy pro tip for anybody who wants to do audio editing. Uh, apparently... There's this thing called uh, rendered files. And, uh, and what happens with the Final Cut Pro is that uh, while you're doing editing and stuff, it wants to do this background rendering of other files uh, so that they can keep things logged in its memory, you know, basically as you're, as you're doing the editing itself. And, uh, of course, that means that you end up with, like, way more files you don't even see that are running in the background that have to take up storage space. Uh, but what's fun 
is that if you say, no, please don't do background rendering, and then also if you could delete all of the rendered files for me, uh, somehow you get 450 gigabytes of, of hard drive space back. So, hey, there you go. Yeah. All right. Hey, and uh, the projects didn't, like, n nothing from my projects went away because those are all, like, hard files that are in there. So, but apparently, yeah, it took up about five times as much space just doing background rendering stuff that I didn't need. Uh, so nice. hopefully I won't have that problem happen to me yet again. Um, I'm, I'm watching my games folder on my D drive just calculate how much space it's using. And mm. It's 400, 400 uh, gigs and going. 400 gigs and going, yeah. Yeah, it's just calculating it. I'm watching the number climb. Oh, it's over 500. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, so I've got, I've got three hard drives, though, so... Cool. Yeah, see, that's, this one, that's this one file is mostly my Steam games, and it's uh, 582 gigabytes. Okay. And then I've got, like... That's a big library games, you got going on there. Which is another 16 gigs, and then, yeah. like... You gotta There's get a... this one with 20 gigs and World of Warcraft, which takes up 73 gigs. That's on my D drive. Wow, like takes a... up 73 gigs now? Wow. I mean, yeah, that's a big game. Um, Damn. I mean, that's just my D drive, which is only a terabyte. Damn. So I've got, <laughs> got 6.9 gigabytes free on that hard drive. Oh, that's good. I've taken up <laughs> almost the entire terabyte on yeah. that one. Yeah. As opposed to the other drive I've got, I have a, a four terabyte that's got 3.31 terabytes free. Oh, wow. So, that's um, uh, that's something else. But you see, what you got to do is you got to get on, on GOG. Did you hear about the whole uh, GOG's new return policy now, Alex? No. no. Hello, Drunk Paul. Hey, Paul. Hello. I heard about GOG's return policy. Hello. Yeah, Paul, why don't you why don't you take it away? Tell us about Gog's new return policy. <laughs> if I'm remembering correctly, they just they decided that every game you buy through them can be returned within 30 days, no questions. Which is kind of crazy because you can beat a lot of games in 30 days. Now, I'm not someone who does that because I forget about games for a couple of years at a time. Feels. Right. But you know, it's totally feasible to pick up a brand new game and be like, eh, I got enough out of this. And then just, just call refund it, a, it. Call the day. Yeah. Yeah. And because GOG is DRM free, you could actually still have it downloaded onto your hard drive. <laughs> yeah. Without having to have, have that. I feel like they're going to change that. Well, n they they like they said they're gonna have to change something. There. Well, they what what they what they said is they are going to be looking for abuse cases. So, like for instance, if they yeah. see that somebody is like constantly like buying the game and then returning them, it, it, they'll be like, "Dude, you did this like four times, <laughs> like in a yeah. month. Like, come on, come on, guys." I, I, I'm fairly certain they're going to be monitoring, and they. They they did this and they did state explicitly we've done this we are able to do this because you guys have been very good about this do not try to abuse this because if you if our community decides to abuse this we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna stop doing that yeah and then they had the uh, part of it where because of being able to share games in your library <laughs> theoretically like when when a new game comes out you could get into a share chain where one copy basically supplies the game to everybody. <laughs> um, so, hey, there's something. GOG's trying, though, man. <laughs> like, they're, like, hey, they're, I mean... and they're clearly not trying. They, they understand that that's a risk. They're, it's oh, yeah. not like they're just like, oh, people will try to sell back games they played fully. Oh, no, that's weird. Like, they know that's yeah. going to happen. But they've accepted that as part of what's going to happen, and they're going to be very aware of it. And also, most people don't do that anyways. Like, I don't. I, I've played yeah. a game in an hour and been like, no, I don't want this, and just still haven't refunded it because I looked at it and went, eh, I paid $4 for this, and it's an indie dev. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I returned one not that long ago but it was like a ten dollar game but it was like all right this is 
30 minutes into this game and it was like, wow, this is terrible and not anything like Was it Wilson? I... No. <laughs> <laughs> Someone tell me about Wilson because I do not know enough about it. Oh, man. But Yahtzee did a review of it and the Spiffing Brit did an exploit video on I it. I like the Spiffing Brit video. <laughs> I haven't seen I haven't seen the Spiffing Brit video. I did see Yahtzee's review of it, and I just kind of went, yeah, that's what I about expected from a semi-generic MMO. Uh, an RPG, but yes. It's, uh, let me, let oh, it me, is an RPG. It's, 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 it's I, Diablo, I will, I but Spiffing not. It's, Di- it's, like, it's like New Coke, but for Diablo. <laughs> it's, Di- it's, it's New Diablo. <laughs> Enjoy. If I were Spiffing um, Brit. The the problem the problem with Wilson that people basically say is, is that it's so utterly broken because they it, didn't bother to do they, it, 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 there's so many glitches and and bugs and and exploits and problems associated with it that you can't really imagine anybody having fun as a multiplayer experience sort of like how people are saying like. Even when they do Wastelanders, Fallout 76 isn't really going to still be playable because they're basically still people playing in God mode on the on the, on the servers <laughs> who have been yeah. able to exploit it to death. So, yes, the infinite money, which which when you hear him talk about it, it's it's like wow, that didn't even take him very long to figure out. Did it? Yeah. So the game, so Wolf, Wolken, Wilson, Wilson, uh, made when by Wilson Studio is no less. Yeah. Um, so here, here's the thing. One of my friends on Discord, uh, backed it a while ago, uh, on their Kickstarter. So they had been playing, like, in their early access and everything. And they're, like, they've walked back on so many features and things that they said they were going to have in the game. Mm-hmm. And just taking things back instead of just admitting that they're too hard to do. And still trying to do them, they've just gone, no, we're just not going to do these things instead. Um, for yeah. the first part. Secondly, I guess they've been like banning people that uh, like in the Discord and from the game if they exploit the game or if they talk mm-hmm. bad about it. It's like as a first time game developer with their first game, they're doing a lot of things you do not want to do if you still want to have an audience for a second game. Mm. Yeah, well, I don't think they're gonna have to worry too much about that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's out the window at this point. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, maybe. This is one um, of those the industries. The video is hilarious, though. This is one of those like, industries. Yeah, um, they're, they're just not very good on the whole, hey, we fucked up part, and we're going to make you suffer for it. No, no, if you screwed up and there's all these massive exploits, then you don't ban the people that have the game. You just kind of like, yeah, we're going to kind of like either temporarily suspend you for doing it or like we're gonna leak your character for doing it but you know uh, we're gonna I ban do, you from the game i do love when yeah. the game devs are like say we're gonna punish the players for finding out that we are shitty at making game <laughs> like, like and, and that's yeah my friend that was telling me about this that backed it and was like yeah no it's broken they won't even play it now because of how broken it is but my friend that does that is a QA. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, like, part of their job is, like, you know, uh, they worked on Life is Strange, oh. for instance. And they okay. worked on a ton of other games. I think they worked on For Honor. Um, oh, God. They're the no. ones that uh, currently... <laughs> no. I, don't know, I need to... I don't know. QA does not mean they have control, by the way. No, no. I, <laughs> no, what I should say is For Honor really didn't have much in the way of, like, bugs or glitches. It, well, it, there you go. But, but, but the uh, game I mean, sucked. it did, but not... <laughs> the game, the bugs or glitches a... did not show it's themselves as the problem. It was the game itself that showed itself as a problem. The game yeah. itself no, was this, this bad. This is my friend who I um, but the, but... had mentioned was trying to go for Larian. Yes. So... Which Check would in be with them. awesome. They might be working on Baldur Gate, uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Yes. Yeah, that's cool. That'd be awesome. But yeah. So my awesome. friend, who is a QA, went, yeah, this game is just shit. <laughs> yeah. They... And that's like, oof. I do find that that seems to be this weird trend among uh, development and publishing houses now where it's like, well, we didn't spend enough time 
trying to refine the game, but we're just going to get angry at people when they when they when they call us out on it or try to exploit it in any way, shape, or form that we made the mistakes. Because um, Bethesda has been really good, at, really amazing about that. <laughs> Just like automatically, like let's just ban everybody from playing this game. That is obviously broken. Um, and uh, so, hey, looking forward to that being a trend down the line. We didn't do a good job making the game, but it's your fault for explaining that to us. <laughs> why? Why I did mean, you do that? I, th I think it stems from the whole No Man's Sky thing, honestly, where they're like, "Yeah, we made this game, and now people are pissed, and we're gonna have to spend the next several years." adding the stuff that we said we'd have in the game on launch. Yep. Because if we don't, then, oh boy, we're in trouble. Oh, yeah, Sean Murray had to walk a lot of stuff back with that game. Hello Games was just like, if they hadn't done anything with No Man's Sky, they would have been sunk. That that was just like a, a no-brainer. Uh, I, I do like where No Man's Sky ended up, though. Just uh, I did see a, a review of it that basically said, you know, it makes sense they shut everything off for a while and then came out with fixes. Yeah. When I finally got my hands on it, it it had already gone through the next patch, so there was, like, some game in it. Um, but... There's game in my game. There's, there's finally some game, but I, I gotta be honest with you. I found an exploit real fast that I just stumbled upon. That gave me basically as many ships as I wanted. <laughs> um, Whoopsies! And, yeah, well, here's the fun. Here's a fun thing, and I don't know. I don't think the Spiffing Brit uh, really did this exactly. He did something kind of similar when he talked about. He no did an item duplication thing. Yeah. Well, there's uh, there's something that he might not know about, um, which is you should tell him then, not uh, that he'll ever do it because he said he wouldn't play it ever again. Yeah. Well, that's that's understandable. So what happened was I was on my first planet in No Man's Sky, and I had my little basic ship, but I was uh I was heading I was tooling around the planet, and they had this derelict ship, and it was this big cargo hauler, right? And uh, so I, I went to that cargo hauler, and I'm sure what you're supposed to do at that point is see if you can scrounge some, some gear out of it so that you might be able to get off the planet. And then I thought to myself, or I can work on trying to get this semi-operational, this gigantic cargo hauler, just so that I can actually get it airborne. And I get it airborne, and I go to the nearest space station, and when you get there, there's all of these other ships that are owned by other captains that are that are out there. And if you want to, you can try trading a ship for a ship. And so it turns out that this derelict ship that I had just gotten to work was also a huge cargo hauler, so it was worth a, a pretty fair amount of money, like a few million credits. <laughs> you know, enough that it would be worth more than basically any of the other ships that you were coming across, even if they were fairly good, because they're not like giant red dwarf hauler ships so i trade it i'm thinking to myself okay this this is good you know this is a semi-functional lethargic beast but i could trade it in for like a, a more nimble fully customized one and i trade it in and i pay no money for it because my ship was worth more and and now i have this new ship and i'm super happy about that but then i got a thing i got an idea in my head i wonder what happens if i go back over and look at my ship well it's still decided that that ship is not actually owned by anyone now my old ship so it so it asks me if i want to own this ship that i just sold and i'm like uh -oh. yes i will own that ship that i just sold and now i own it again would you like that to make, be your primary ship sure i go up to another captain Hey, would you like to buy this ship that I just found? Yeah, sure, I'll take that. <laughs> Sell it off to him. And then go back to my old Red Dwarf ship. This this is an unknown ship. Would you like to buy it? Yes, I would. No credits down. <laughs> just just it I found it on the side of the road. So there gets to be a point where every ship that's in the bay is owned by me. <laughs> and Jesus. Now I have a fleet of ships. <laughs> 
<laughs> that I've paid literally zero dollars for, <laughs> and there's just nothing they can do about it. Some of them are fighters, some of them are capital ships, <laughs> like... There's I have heard of that exploit where it's, I, I, and I can't remember if it was just you who told me of this exploit that I've heard of. Maybe. But it's one of, yeah, it was definitely you. I, mm -hmm. I remember this story specifically. It's like one of those things where it's like, how do you, how do you have a ship leave yeah. and then come back? Yeah. Like, how do you have a, how, how can you sell a ship and have it remain unclaimed? Yeah, that was a, a weird thing for me, but I wasn't going to complain. It's I think that there's this thing, if you get to it, like, if you just go immediately up to it, the game has not, um, like, transferred ownership of, of it to the other person yet. So, so you can just say, hey, I'll, I'll take it. Um, but it didn't have to be immediate. It, it, it could actually take a little bit of time before you went back over. But it's the reason I find it very strange, like, when Sean Murray was saying that, like, Bethesda shouldn't worry about changing Fallout 76, you know, just let it be what it is. It's like, dude, you, yeah. you're one to talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, la the latest that came out about Bethesda, because they're, they're finally doing the Wastelander expansion, you know, a year and a half after <laughs> the release of the game, where there's actually... Totally on time. Yeah, for, yeah. They had to get the battle royale out first. Make sure. Is anyone could... playing that? Uh, a few people, but it's very like small. Okay. There's a very small community around that. But I thought that it was funny that like one of the executives over at Bethesda was like, "We made a bit of a miscalculation because we thought people really wanted to have a PvP experience in a Fallout game." <laughs> Turns out they really wanted to have like a, a player versus environment, a PvE experience. We didn't know, so I guess we're going to tweak the game to be like that. And I keep thinking to myself, do none of you know what your series is? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're investors. They don't know what they're selling. They just know they're selling. Oh, man. <laughs> we, we are very serious businessmen, and we are selling a thing. <laughs> it's a widget. We they're selling like hotcakes. You mean we should sell hotcakes? <laughs> We, we are in the widget business. We don't know what widgets do, but we know that we sell them. So hopefully people will buy them. I still don't know what widgets do, so that's fair. I wish I knew what <laughs> widgets widget. did. How do widgets work? I don't know. Um, so, so yeah. Um, I did say that it, once they come out with the Wastelanders expansion, if they do like a free play days or they put it on deep, deep sale, I may go back and play it. If, if for no other reason to do a re-review, <laughs> just to say, go. hey. Okay. I liked your uh, your ReCore video, by the way. I left that on on the side screen here while I oh, played yeah. a different game and just listened to you curse incessantly. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, wait, he's putting himself through this again. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. so entertaining. <laughs> yeah, it, it's very entertaining. But... I figured somebody would appreciate my pain. <laughs> um, I... People occasionally watch your things, Nathan. It's crazy. Occasionally, yeah. It's it's rare, but I like it. Um, yeah, that was one of those things where uh, I had played Record before, and I didn't hate it. Like I, I liked it just fine, but I I couldn't put I, – I had put it down, and I had forgotten the reason I put it down. I was like, <laughs> man – I, I remember something, I, I remember liking stuff about this, but I put it down for a reason. I can't remember exactly what it was. And soon after I started, I was like, oh, right. <laughs> this. This game is, is terrible. This game is like, <laughs> well, this game is, it, it, it goes through modes of being just frenetic to the point of no return. And th that was the, the clip you saw where I was in that arena. That's the first time I had ever been to that arena. And there's a whole platforming section you go through before that that I didn't even show, where you have to go through the rings and dash through the rings and hit them at the right time so that you can get to the platforms and every it, it, they Oh, man. I started to remember why I, why I was not in love with this. It, so it sounds like a big mashup of a different genre. Re Recore... Understand, Recore was was developed by like the guy who made Metroid, like the 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 ideas in it. Like you can see the core of something that might have felt a little bit like Metroid. The recore of the, something. The recore of what you could imagine 
was Metroid. There there are some elements where you're like, oh, I, I, I see where he was going with this. Um, the general idea, like if you when you start playing the game, it's it's about your main character is out in sort of this wasteland that's just populated by robots. It's it's just a robot wasteland basically. And uh, as far as she is concerned, she she may be the only person that's still out there. She's trying to find other people. And she has these three cores that are um, Mac and Duncan, and I can't remember the other one. And you can put those cores into different frames for robots. And so you have a spider frame, and you have, like, a the, the big gorilla frame and all of those. And a war frame. Oh, wait, wrong game. Sorry. You have a war frame. You have a tank frame. That was the new one. That uh, that was like part of the special definitive edition, uh, which doesn't work as I showed. <laughs> it's just you run if you like running into shit. It's perfect for that. Um, and then you have the little the little flyer thing, and and the idea is that you can use all of these in different combinations to explore this this place. And some of like the spider bot will be able to run vertically and and like uh, inverted on top of these like tracks and. Uh, the big gorilla guy can can uh, you know uh, bend metal and stuff to open up paths, and your flyer can uh, take advantage of like steam vents, and so you can get up really high and use it as like a balloon. But you can only take two of them out at a time, which I always thought was weird because you have three cores. Why can't I just take out all three goddamn cores? Because then I got to go back to my base every time I need to change out which ones I have with me. <laughs> it's just another one of those annoyances. But there's, there was that thing that you probably saw in the video where you can snatch cores from enemies and they get like put into like your, your backpack and then you can use that to help upgrade and everything. But while you're doing that, in the, the, the tug-of-war competition that you're in, the enemies around you can still just hit you all the time. And if they hit you, they basically throw... You, you can't get out of this tug of war while they're hitting you. <laughs> you're, just like, you're just like stuck here holding on to this magical tether. And so that, that becomes a, a fun thing. But there, there was this yeah. whole idea with the different color cores that there's also different color ammunitions that you switch between. And so you can switch between the ones that are the best for the enemies that you're dealing with. So technically, I should have been if I was smart. I should have been using, like, the blue ammunition for the blue guy and the red ammunition for the red guy and switching between them. And, it, and, and that's when I realized, though, uh, I could not concentrate on doing that while trying to not be on fire, not be shocked, uh, dodge out of the way jump over the <laughs> jump over the attacks avoid the radiation <laughs> and constantly so, so what i'm hearing is there was far too much going on there was way too much going on at one time where you had it's... to yeah yeah i i think one of the the sillier things in that game is also like yeah this is this is only useful on this specific thing like yeah why why make varying abilities yeah if you're going to stick to raw metroid key to slot puzzle like right. we've done that we've done that a thousand times right we don't need a million more mm -hmm. this power is the key to this hole yeah give yeah. us give us something where hey here's your new ability it's going to solve some problems but it's not going to solve every well, problem yeah it's not a key to a lock. It's a tool to a problem. Right. The The ultimate problem with that whole idea of different kind of ammunitions being effective is that I started to realize, well, I'll just use the, the generic white ammunition because it's going to be somewhat effective and I can just use it on everything and then I don't have to think about switching between this constantly because I have like five yep. different colors on screen. Um, but the thing that really drove me nuts is just how many waves there were that you have to clear before they'll let you out of this damn arena section. <laughs> and it's just it but it just got so annoying like okay so these the dogs come at you okay i i took care of the do finally i got through that oh no the big gorilla things are after me now 
I gotta take care of those. Oh, the big Uber dogs come in after that. I'm sitting there like, how, and the second, the second that you fall, it takes you right back to the very beginning of all of those waves. <laughs> and, and oh, you've put a lot of effort in. Too bad. Too bad. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you get some, you get to keep the experience. There's just a, that point where I was like, okay, you know what? I'm exiting out. I can't. I just can't. My brain is broken. I my brain got broken at that point. All, all we hear on the video from that point is Nathan screeching. Yeah. When you got when you got to the point where I'm just literally just like a puddle, I was like, okay, it's not worth it. This is way <laughs> this is this is the the this is the most insane thing. Like like I'm okay if games want to be hard. Like it, maybe it's not my cup of tea. Dark Souls can be Dark Souls. I might not finish it, but I understand it. But if Dark Souls was a Technicolor, like, fever dream, where, like, everything attacked you simultaneously at the same time while you're jetting through the sky with a laser sword, I would be like, I freaking don't know what's happening right now. Well, that's, that's the trick. It's not about difficulty, it's about challenge. Yeah, yeah this can be really hard because the enemy has 20,000 bajillion health, yeah, and you don't. Your weapon does two at a time because you don't have the right <laughs> ammunition. You needed to get the cool, yeah. random thing from this other room to make this. E yeah, that's not a challenge. That's that's difficulty. That's making things harder for the sake of making it harder. What a, ch a challenge should be based on. Hey, if you understand our mechanics, this fight's gonna change its entire landscape. Right. I, I, one of the most interesting examples of that to me has been watching my wife play Breath of the Wild. Mm, yes. She is not a video game player. Mm -hmm. In fact, Breath of the Wild is the first like campaign of a video game she's finished. Mm -hmm. But watching her go from I don't know how to use my arrows to shooting herself into the air with a bomb because she doesn't know how to she doesn't know where to get updrafts so she can get the slow mo that I told her to do. It is amazing. Yeah. Because all of a sudden the challenge is just so unique to the mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. I think Breath of the Wild is actually a really good example for that too. I haven't played it myself because I don't have a, a Switch or anything, but I've seen how it's played and I've seen how you can interact with the environment and all the different utilities, as you're saying all the different ways you can interact with the gameplay to play it differently and do things differently is really cool. Yeah. Um, I start to realize that some of my favorite games really uh, lean on the idea that by experimentation, you can use the game's mechanics to find new innovative ways to play it. Um, and I think that's, that's where Breath of the Wild really shines, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I've heard things about, like, the story, and it's like, yeah, you can go straight up to Ganondorf with, like, a, a wooden good. sword and kill him. Yeah. Um, Screaming and on fire. Yeah. Yep. It's like, you can beat the game without, like, doing anything else, but everything else you do in the game helps you do that a little easier, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's like, it, it's, as as you're saying, it's, you can go kite uh, surfing on your shield, you can, you know, I was watching some other video, the thing about that is, um... Where, where your weapons break constantly, it teaches you that you need to not rely on your weapon, but you need to be able to rely on your innovation and just understanding how the systems work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and honestly, if my son's got a Switch, I should just get Breath of the Wild and steal the Switch. <laughs> yeah, yes. you should just Yes, you should. Um, but honestly, no, if, if there were, I'm not even a huge Zelda fan. Like, the original Zelda was fun. I didn't really play the rest of them. Maybe I think the N64 ones. Uh, I didn't have an N64. I played other friends. Else. But, like, I'm not a huge Zelda fan. The story is, eh, it's all right. Kind of generic to me, I guess. But, like, Breath of the Wild looks fun. Mm -hmm. you, it looks really fun. You should have You should have played Wind Waker. That's still my favorite. That's still my, my favorite uh, Zelda game. Flavorite. My favorite. <laughs> I, I, st I still love Wind Waker. <laughs> that, that's, sorry. That's, that's, like, my favorite. I mean, my I think everyone kind of has their favorite. My, I still love Twilight Princess. That, it, but 
That was also Twilight Princess was good. The yeah. first Zelda game I played extensively. Like I played, I actually played some of the older stuff uh, in the hos- when I was in the hospital, like way way back. Mm. Um, just because that's what they had, and I was like, oh, this is fun. I'm gonna blow up this wall. Oh, that was useful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny because like. Like, I, I had an N64, and I didn't really play the Zelda games from that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was Wind Waker's probably the first one that I really, like, finished. <laughs> so so maybe that's the reason. I don't know. Finishing games? What is that? Like, the first the first one in the series that you finish, maybe you just have, like, a, a soft spot for it. You, like, you... I, don't, don't ask me if I finish games. No, I you, don't. No, you uh... never You never do. Except you, you said you finished um, uh, New Vegas. You said you finished. I New finished Vegas. New Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I finished. I, I finished Skyrim. I finished New Vegas. You you uh, can't finish. You Skyrim. can't finish you Skyrim. Just <laughs> simply, you beat a certain set of campaigns. You're right. I I redact that. You got I did not Finish Skyrim. Yeah. I played the main storylines that I wanted to make sure I finished to get to the, the main game done. So yeah. I did the Civil War, and I did the uh, Dragon War. Yep. And I did the, the Thieves Guild and Assassin's Guild and Mage Guild. Yeah. But did you paralyze and every NPC that you... <laughs> I didn't. I'm not this big for it, Nathan. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that sounds <laughs> awful. I love it. He did a video of that recently where he got a paralyzed uh, potion... A poison of paralysis that lasts for like twenty five hours. Yeah, and he made like six hundred of them. A thousand. And he just went. <laughs> no, he only made like six hundred in the video. No, no, um, he, no, he made a yeah, thousand. Yeah, he just went around he... with uh, the, he was gonna paralyze every NPC in Skyrim. Yeah. That's kind of hilarious, and yeah. I want to do that myself. It, it, just by, by pickpocketing everybody. <laughs> reverse <laughs> putting, pickpocket. Reverse pickpocketing. <laughs> just yeah, putting put poison in there and their thing, and they just fall over. So yeah. alive. He, he had to get enough regents because he said that there's there's exactly like 1,018 NPCs in the game, so he had to get enough resources together, and just in order to do that. But what happened was that then the potions weighed so much. That he had to put a bunch of them on the ground, <laughs> so that yeah. he could walk <laughs> in the first place. Yeah, I don't know why he's put things on the ground. By the way, you should put things Ooh. in barrels. Well, the I ground. the thing that I still don't understand, and maybe there's a reason, is you know how every time he goes so that he can do the exploits, he goes up to Dragon's Reach, right, and to where they have yes. the alchemy. So, why it? Y- y- you have all the money. Why don't you just buy the player house? That's because then like... you have to upgrade it. Yeah, but that doesn't take yeah. much. <laughs> like he, like, like Riano Keeves has more money than anybody could ask for. It's it, it's, <laughs> it's faster. It, you don't have to build it. You don't have to wait. You don't have to make a loading screen. It's already there. Let's just go use it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. I don't know. I. I, I, I've done a full enchanting, like, I've built, you know, leveled my enchanting in Skyrim to max to see what would happen, but I did it on that tape, on, you know, an available table, because it's easier that way. Now you just have to get the uh, oh, perk overhaul that I've got with 300 perks. Oh my god. Exactly. And and just go crazy with it. Yeah, no, I have a ton of Skyrim mods. Uh, oh yeah. The perk I... overhaul just is wild yeah <laughs> i'm just i'm just at the point where i'm surprised something surpassed my hours in skyrim yeah. is it dark souls it's warframe of all things warframe yeah oh yeah yeah did it <laughs> it's not ultimate skyrim though <laughs> yeah well the com- in the combination of special edition and uh normal skyrim probably still beats uh, Warframe, oh, but man. still. Oh wow! It's the thought that counts. So I, I have three hundred and ten hours played in Skyrim. Um, which which isn't crazy, I know, but like uh, the game I've been playing, which is Warhammer Forty K Inquisitor Martyr, has four hundred and forty four hours in it. <laughs> oh wow! Oh, I think I made it to about eight hundred, but that's a personal problem. Yeah, sounds it. 
<laughs> I've got 278 hours in Elite Dangerous. Hey, oh, there you go. Which, if I figure out what I'd want to do with it, I'd do something with it. Anyway, um, like Donkey did, uh, I have, there we go, 378 hours in Dawn of War 2 Retribution. I have an issue with Dawn of, uh, with, with Warhammer 40k games. And yeah, I've well. noticed. Except, except when they're bad. I don't like them when they're bad. I like you have an issue and it's not enough DACA. Not enough DACA. Definitely is the issue. Need more orcs. It's... There's no orcs in, in Inquisitor Martyr, though. There's Eldar and Dark Eldar and Tyranids. Uh, yes. I'll, I'll accept all those things. Um, I them all. Sure. Good for you. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, dropping a uh, video into the interactive is um, Ultimate Red Dead Redemption 2, of course, the great follow-up to uh, Ultimate Skyrim <laughs> that Dunkey did. Um... Probably not mods that were built by the game or to be played directly from the game library, but uh, but uh, that that was that was awfully fun. Uh, I think it's the part where there's like trains flying through the air. That seems to be like a common theme. Is like... trains flying through the air? Yeah. I mean, it's Red Dead Redemption trains, so it works. Yeah, yeah. Um. So anyway. Uh, I originally had a topic that I was going to <laughs> that I was going to get to, and yeah, was it a terrible topic? It's a damn shame. Topic? Yeah, really is. Uh, no, actually, no, actually, it was the topic that I was going to do last month, but then everything got delayed, so I realized we kind of had to talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, my topic of conversation that I was going to talk about tonight. Uh, was actually inspired by a video by Jim Sterling, uh, where they were talking about the term Metroidvania style action games. Ah, uh, uh, and I mean, uh, mm. yeah. So what what he was talking about in that was that some people did not like that term. The idea of well, what, the the general idea of a series basically being the representation of an entire genre to the point that it becomes synonymous with it. Uh, but I think it, they also had a problem with the combination of two different games then becoming a compound word all of its own. Um, but it, it got me to thinking about like how you feel about a game actually being the the sole representation of a genre because oh. you don't have to just use it for metroidvania either there's there's a lot of others mm -hmm. like that's souls like true. um for instance well, that's here's the thing about that and and i know um game makers toolkit talked about this as well mm. um but it's like once it becomes more than just the one game when it becomes an entire like it becomes a genre when it's a defining aspect of other games where it's a specific thing in that game becomes a a way of doing things in other games so metroidvania for instance is the exploration stuff of metroid and the platforming type stuff that's what that is souls like is just the challenge curve and whatnot the games the the punishing uh gameplay style that is indicative of the Souls games and the uh, Bloodborne games and stuff by From Software, but everyone's emulating that now too. That's right. Yeah. So th when you say Souls like, there are some things that actually emanate in my head that, like, there are certain save points where the enemies will regenerate when you save at them, uh, and that, like, your your progress will essentially be left on the ground for you to go and pick up and salvage. Uh, that there there are certain things that you expect from a essentially a souls like genre, or or a Metroid genre or anything like that. But there were some people that that had a problem. I think mostly with the idea that since Castlevania and Metroid, uh, from from the roots that we know them from, that the genre is known for, haven't really produced a lot of titles in recent years. If it's even fair to have them be the representation of it. But I think the problem was that 
then the question gets begged, um, what would you call it instead? And when you ask that question, you would have to redefine it as something like, I think they, they ballied around the idea of action platformer. Well, action platformer is is a very wide-ranging term that goes far beyond that style of game, so it's not specific enough. So, so I don't know. It feels like this isn't even just a problem with video games. You could also kind of say this for tabletop gaming, too, is that when something comes out, you almost have to describe it by other things that have been existing in the space beforehand. You and that does happen in tabletop too. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's what I mean. Is like you know, if if I'm gonna t say, hey, I got this great idea for a board game, uh, chances are the the easiest way for me to describe it is to explain another board game that you might be familiar with that it's has monopoly like. Yeah, here's here's a, here's here's a monopoly like. It's literally just monopoly. <laughs> Every monopoly is just monopoly like. It's like monopoly, but if you <laughs> shot each other at the table, so monopoly, yeah. Russian rouletteopoly. <laughs> Welcome. Russia, Russiaopoly. Russiaopoly. In Soviet. In Soviet Russia, monopoly play you. Uh, you know the <laughs> wait. That's just normal America. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's perfect. Um, so what was my point? Oh right. Um, <laughs> my my point was how do how do people feel about uh, genres getting named for specific games, and uh, are there is there a better way of defining a genre? I don't I think it's okay I understand where there's the hesitation because it does tie it to these specific titles and their 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 intricacies but the reason these things come to be is not because it's tied to the intricacies it's tied to the core concepts so Metroidvania is Typically, an exploratory is a multi-leveled exploratory adventure where your upgrades and powers allow you to traverse more of the level. Mm -hmm. A Souls-like is a game where there is com punishing combat where you are able to respawn, but there is a cost to that that death, and typically that cost can be retrieved later on. So you know. Right. Things like, uh, uh, what's it called? Hollow, Hollow Knight is a Souls-like Metroidvania. Yep. Yep. But that's good to explain exactly what the core concepts are. It is a punishing combat, you know, exploratory, simple, you know, deep, simple but deep lore with powers that allow you to explore the area explore the area but because it's so like at a random pace you know these right. this concert of ideas so it's i don't mind that it's tied to it's a it's most notable starting point right right because you you have similar problems too with like zelda likes or mario likes you know people that say mm -hmm. like you know this is this is what it's like you know is banjo kazooie sort of a mario like game yeah it it kind of is. Um, it, you know, you could say platformer, but again, platformer is a very wide-ranging title and, and could incorporate a whole lot of different genres and perspectives. Uh, and it's kind of hard to explain the specifics of it when you could reference something as shorthand. Um, mm -hmm. Even Souls, it, even Souls like, eventually became the Souls born genre, which is again in its own, in its own right, is a compound word of two different games. Um, well, albeit by the same, you know, publisher. Wait, same, same publisher, but you know, once upon a time, Metroid and Castlevania were both basically like Nintendo properties. They might have been developed by different people, but you know, they were they were kind of indicative of like the NES genre, uh, the NES uh, era. Um, 
but just in general, like I, I, I can understand people's hesitation on the idea that uh, a thing gets referenced specifically by something else. But I also don't know if there's a better option. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if if it makes a lot of like Paul gave a really good uh, description of what those games would normally be referred to, like. That's a that's a mouthful though to explain to people when you're trying to explain exactly. to them what the game is. I mean, you could say it's an exploratory platform with punishing combat and a, you know, unique pathways. Mm-hmm. Or you could say it's a met, you know, a souls like Metrovania. Yeah. Yeah, which or it's a roguelike or it's a roguelike, yeah. Which, which is also another term for that. That yeah, That is... Yeah. yeah. Which, which, which they talked about, too, actually. As Sterling even brought that up, which is, when you think about it, um, roguelike, most people probably never played the original Rogue. Like, pr- people Definitely probably not. never played Rogue, but it didn't stop the fact that people use the term roguelike and seem to pretty much know what that is. Um, even though you don't have a reference to the original game, because there there was a game and it was called Rogue, and that's where we get the term. Um, but I've never played it. Um, you know, it was before my time. Uh, and uh, but I know exactly what they mean when they say it. So uh, I I I don't know a better way to describe that. Like basically hardcore mode, but normal. <laughs> Like your normal mode is a hard <laughs> is an Iron Man mode, <laughs> and, and you, all the choices that you make are permanent, and there's no backseas, and you probably have no save files, and uh, if your characters die, they're dead, and <laughs> when when you're done, the run's over, your progress doesn't get saved. Screw you, you suck. <laughs> Screw you guys, I'm going home, <laughs> and, and you know. I could, I guess, I could describe it that way. Sure, go for it. But why would I bother? Why would I bother? My vernacular is valid. Yeah, and and Wilson was a Diablo like, but no. like worse. And so, I, <laughs> like, how do, you, how do you describe Wilson? The, the biggest thing to me is, you know, does this game influence the industry enough to make? copies where people look at the core pieces of it and try to make a game based off those core pieces not necessarily just oh i'm gonna make a barely not copyright infringing mario clone no no no. i'm gonna make a game that takes those concepts and puts them into my own spin because at their core those are good concepts yeah yeah, I I think that um, the the place where you would get into a problem is when the very core idea that they are based on stagnates innovation. Uh, if you say that I want to make a Metroidvania game and it's going to be exactly like Metroid, <laughs> um, that's that's not very useful. But if I can say that, well, it's a Metroidvania, but there's some there's some new stuff here. There's some differences. I've actually added to that. Um, it, it, you know. I think the best way to think of it is, I'm making a Metroidvania, and I realized I was making a Metroidvania. Not I set out to make a Metroidvania. Yeah. Now, like, the problem, of course, is that then you play something like Bloodstained, and it's like, mm. yeah, the. Yeah, he pretty much set out to just make Castlevania, <laughs> but it worked real well, so I can't fault him for it. But, but that also involves one of the original creators of the Castlevania game, one of the yeah. many of the Castlevania games. So that's just he's making it under. He's like, I don't own the Castlevania series, but I want to make some of the games I already made. Yeah, basically, that, I want that, to make the game. That's a remarkably specific circumstance. Yes, it. It is. Um, and, and... Yeah, I, I started playing Bloodstained based on your recommendation oh, last yes. month. Uh, I, I came across a problem. What do I call this? Because it's a Metroidvania, yes, but he's kind of responsible for the term, so can I still use it at this point? <laughs> and 
you know, it was this weird little existential part that has no rhyme or reason, but it was there. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think if anything gets to be called a Metroidvania title, it probably is uh, Bloodstained for that very reason. Um, because because it's, it's as close as you could imagine a, a, a Castlevania game, essentially. Um, but uh, then again, I don't know if he would like that term, because, uh, you know... He did create the Castlevania series, uh, or at least he worked on a lot of them. And uh, and and I don't know would would he want to be reminded of his previous work? That's that's a hard thing to to say. It does feel like almost everything that you make though is going to have to be um, referenced by things that previously exist for people to kind of wrap their head around it because it's new. And yep. uh, telling them about something that's pre-existing is going to be very useful. Uh, like earlier in this uh, show, when people were asking, like, what is Wilson? Like, the only way I can really describe it is by explaining other games that it's like. Because <laughs> I, I don't know how else to, to do that. When people ask me, like, what's Stardew Valley? I'm kind of like, well, imagine, like, Harvest Moon back when Harvest Moon was good. Like, <laughs> like imagine that. Like, I don't know how else to describe these things. Um, well, I mean, you can say... when The biggest thing for me is how familiar is someone with the medium? Yeah. If I'm talking to someone who really understands video game medium, okay, yeah, it's a dungeon crawl crawler isometric RPG with a lot of elements from this game, that game. You know, you're still going to use the game as a reference, but you can give them the big picture and then go, you know, with these aspects and these aspects. Maybe you use a game as a reference, maybe you don't. Uh, permadeath, leveling system, no distinct classes, that kind of stuff. But if you aren't talking with someone who has an intricate understanding of stuff. You mm -hmm. give them a reference point that everyone can understand. So right. Souls-like, Rogue-like, Metroidvania, they become these sort of, oh, I wonder what that means, points of reference that people can use, even if they're not intricately familiar with what the, the vocabulary of what you're talking about. Right. The problem that you run into, and I think the thing that some people were criticizing the idea of, of those titles for, is a problem that I think transcends not just this, but also in, into tab tabletop gaming, and is actually a, a problem for designers, which is what happens when you have somebody that's coming in cold, doesn't really understand anything about it, when I use terms like this, is it going to alienate them because they don't know what those reference points are? If I don't know what a Metroid is, if I don't know what a Dark Souls is, um, and people keep using those terms, uh, am I going to have any frame of reference? Am I going to know what you're talking about? Is it is it all, you know, Greek to me? And uh, so how do you try to loop them into it? Is there a way? I don't actually have the answer. Uh, well, here's the thing. Using non-specific non game terms and using game terms would confuse those people too. It's an isometric yeah. top... It's an isometric dungeon crawler RPG with no class structure. What? Mm -hmm. It's very Diablo-like. What? <laughs> okay, we got to explain this. Mm -hmm. the, the, if you have some familiarity, you might have a basis. If you have no familiar ba familiarity, you have no basis. Yeah. So there's still... The point of I need you need to comprehend your reference point. Yeah. So at that point, we're not talking about is the name that we're using useful or not. Mm hmm Yeah. It's just basic liter literacy in video games. Right. Right. How familiar you are with the thing. Um I don't know how uh you would explain things better. Uh, for most people than than to reference something that was pre-existing um, and and there have been some examples though I, I suppose I could give of ones that started to become more genericized in their terminology um, I think Grand Theft Auto is probably a good example of that because once upon a time when you would have those those sorts of games they would all reference themselves based on Grand Theft Auto well it's like a Grand Theft Auto 
And then it started to become more known as like sandbox games. And now it's become like open world is is a terminology that that gets used around. And I think people kind of understand what that is. It's almost self-explanatory. Um, but at the at its core, that is what Grand Theft Auto is. It's an open world game. <laughs> you know, it, mm-hmm. it, it, it is that. But then everything else kind of falls into it. I think the problem that you have with something like a, a Metroidvania game is that it's some it, it's a very specific thing. It feels like a very specific genre that doesn't have an easy explanation that you can use with it. There are certain there are certain genres and certain kind of play experiences that you can have that don't have a very good analog to something very short and simple and referential that you can give. I don't know if I could explain a Dark Souls or even a Zelda in about three words. I don't know if I could do it. Um, it would it would be a challenge. Uh, I definitely don't know if I could explain Metroid. Um, I, I I I would really be hard pressed. I'd be hard pressed to explain Fallout in a few words. Um, like wh- what do I say? It, open world RPG? I guess that makes sense but also feels real simplistic in in the way that i'm describing it uh i don't know if it would make more sense to refer to things by themselves but i think that that just confuses the issue like what is fallout like it's like fallout it, like you can, there's there is a certain point where you can't refer to like metroid as a metroid like game um, that's kind of like no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> of course, of course it is. <laughs> Except when it's not. Mm. Like, <laughs> when when uh, when the uh, the genres go into some other kind of territory, and all of a sudden it's not really even the kind of game that you you expect it to be. Like when Mario decides to play tennis, it's like <laughs> technically it's a Mario game. <laughs> But it's really not like it's a tennis game. It's it's also kind of a tennis game, and also it's not really like a Mario, Mario Mario game. Like, I can't really tell you that Super Smash Brothers is a Mario game or a Donkey Kong game or anything like that because it's a fighting game, <laughs> even though all those characters are in it. It's um, smashing. It's it, smash genre. It's a character. It's a party fighting game. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a it's a um. Uh, it is a uh, mascot fighting vehicle, <laughs> basically. It's a mascot fighting game. Yeah. Take your favorite mascots and beat the <laughs> shit out of each other. Like the PlayStation Do you All-Stars. care what the description is? Yeah. Leave. And if you care what it means, leave. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Don't care. Don't care what it means. I, uh, like, remember when they did PlayStation All-Stars and no one cared? Um, yeah, I want, oh, yeah. I want Sackboy to fight, uh, Kratos. Yeah, that sounds like fun. Anyway, um. That, that was entertaining. Yeah. It wasn't good, but it was entertaining. It was entertaining. It's, it's hard to, it's hard to beat Smash Brothers for that, uh, genre. But there are some things that you kind of take along with it that, you know, it's not going to be a super serious game. Uh, that, you know, it's not going to be a super, don't, don't, don't expect this to be a fighting sim. It's not a fighting sim. It is a it is a, a brawler, um, but it's like more of a cartoon and arcade. We could call it an arcade style fighting game, um, 2D. So an arcade 2D fighting game, uh, with with uh, characters that you know from other licenses. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much Smash Brothers in a nutshell. Uh, base. You can summarize anything with the proper terms, but sometimes it's nice and easy to just say, eh, this is what it's kind of like. Yeah, it, it, sometimes it's just easier to explain the experience. Like, if I were to explain Smash Brothers to people, I think I would just say, hey, did you ever want to see who would win in a fight, uh, Donkey Kong or Ness from Homeworld? <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you ever want to see who wins it. in a fight? Cloud from Final Fantasy, Ryu from Street Fighter, Mario, or Bayless from the most recent Fire Emblem game. Sure, let's do this. Yeah, 
Can we? What if we? Happen? What if we had Pokemon in the mix of this? Yeah, just throw them at each other. It'll be fine. Did you ever wonder if if Pikachu could actually take Mewtwo out? Well, good, congratulations. <laughs> we have the answer for you. <laughs> Here you go. What's What's Grand Theft Auto like? You ever want to drive uh, into a helicopter? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I wanted to drive to the helicopter. Congratulations. Yeah. Exactly. What's Fallout like? Uh. Well, you you ever want to shoot somebody so hard that they explode? <laughs> Would you like to do? Play that? same throw. Yep. There. There you go. You ever want to shoot a giant scorpion so bad it explodes? Well. Yes. It. We. We got the game for you. <laughs> Enjoy. Um, unfortunately... That is why I've reviewed it. Oh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I feel like there's going to be a, a point where this gets a negative connotation. Like, I feel like there's going to be anthem likes in the future, and it's just going to refer to, like, games that suck. Like... <laughs> Like the, the like when you get into like a, a 76 and 76 just becomes synonymous as like the numerical designation for the moment a, a series goes downhill. Um, like that that can also be useful. Uh, mostly just to warn people that this is a problem. <laughs> Wilson is just Diablo 76. <laughs> Let's just oh, call it what it is. <laughs> no see the problem is i assume wilson has ag- existed for far too long what? as in wilson has existed for so long that it's lost entire concept of whatever it originally was hmm. uh what <laughs> It's a fairly new game, so what? Exactly. That's why it's confusing. <laughs> yes. it's Because a... Wilson is not a 76, because 76 was, here's an existence franchise we're about to fuck up. Right. Oh, motherfuckers. Sorry. <laughs> Apparently the marriage was just called off. Ah, oh, really sad, Rim World. What? Now I have to make a new bedroom. Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whose marriage was called called off, but I have two um, colonists, and they were getting married, and the marriage was just called off, and I don't know why. Tiny Tina was having a tea party, and <laughs> well, shit. Yeah, damn it. Well, we we tried, we failed. Um, see, I always expect that it's gonna be Paul. That starts yelling at his computer in the middle of the nope, episode. It was me. Yeah, yeah, we got a space here. Yeah, there, there's a bit of a, a cognitive uh, change here for me. Don't to worry, I'm also surprised. Yeah, 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 the guy that... So they broke up, and then the, the guy is now sleeping on the floor because he was kicked out of the bed, so you know. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, colonists. Isn't that what we all feel? Damn it, colonists. <laughs> Damn it, colonists. <laughs> now I know how the natives felt when they saw the Mayflower come over. Ah, shit. Here we go again. They're Damn gonna it, colonists. <laughs> it's going to be Jamestown hell. all over again. Here we go. What do you mean, Jamestown? You'll learn when you're older. You'll learn when no, you're I old. won't. I'll get smallpox. <laughs> ah, shit, you're right. That went darker than I expected to say. <laughs> I'm gonna keep drinking. Well, RimWorld is a great simulator to explain smallpox, apparently. Um, no, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the review I want as my, uh, my poster board when I'm advertising my grade. Rim- game rim world it's a great simulator of smallpox <laughs> this is this is the this is the glowing review that we can start giving games better than smallpox <laughs> Just... oh shit oh, man that's that's 
R- RimWorld, now Smallpox no. 3. Welcome no, to Alex. RimWorld is War Crime Simulator. <laughs> well, okay, maybe. Have you is... not seen a Spiffing Brit's organ harvesting videos? <laughs> no. No, I don't look up organ harvesting videos. Yeah, surprisingly, well, that's, that's not something that I look up on my YouTube, <laughs> Alex. I don't... All right. Well, well, well. Yeah, there's a lot of organ harvesting people do. And making human hats. That's the whole meme in the RimWorld subreddit. I, making hats I and organ harvesting. I don't human even, hats. They're made of human leather. I don't even want to look it up because I'm afraid of the videos that are going to be suggested to me. <laughs> I'm not doing that because no. Yeah. That sounds like a personal problem, Nathan. What? It's fantastic. You have to. I am not looking up human hats anytime soon. Human hats. Human hats. Sorry, what? I love that if I type in organ harvesting into YouTube. Okay, these are the suggestions that come up. Just explain. Oh just just so you know. The first one is RimWorld. Okay. Told the, you. Next, <laughs> the next one is ASMR. What? <laughs> yeah. what, what? Wait. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, organ harvesting oh ASMR. Apparently a predictive uh, um, text. That I did not expect at all. Well then. That's new and interesting. And please do not send that anywhere near me. I don't need more cops. You more? It's it's New Hampshire. You don't have that many cops. I have more than I have more than I want in New Hampshire. That's fair. A group of donkeys is abandoned, lost, and wandered into the area. They seem accustomed to human contact, and they join my colony. <laughs> what? Why do I need donkeys? Because sometimes the ass follows you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so organ harvesting ass and donkeys. And... I can train them to haul though, so I guess that's cool. Just haul ass. Yeah, they're gonna haul ass. Um, Perfect. They, they, they don't do. They don't. They're useless. Otherwise, I guess they're gonna be hauling animals. That's fine. Because what am I calling? I have two colonists, and one of them won't do hauling as labor. So, whatever. Well, I should probably is... install a bed for him, though, huh? Man, I got. It. <laughs> This has been more chaotic than I was expecting. I'm glad I've been drinking. Yes. Oh, I haven't been drinking. That Maybe clears up everything, doesn't it? <laughs> no, no, there's no clarity when drinking. Yeah. There's yeah. all the clarity. It's, uh, it's, if I look up human hat, what happens? No. <laughs> no. Just... The FBI finds you before we do. Human hat. What? Human. There's some wrapping hat out of the door? Who? <laughs> Who's that? Okay. U.S. government. I thought that was the doctor. Okay, Alex. If I if if I type in human hat, this is what YouTube predicts. I think they think I I'm talking about human hat Sumi Miku, human hatching, human hatching from egg, human hatred. Human nature, I have, like, now they're really stretching here. Um, (laughs) Human heat resistance. Human heat Sam Roberts band. I, yeah. Um, so, figure that. (laughs) I don't, I don't know. What was what was the name of the video? I don't. What are you What are you looking for? What are you trying to do? I thought you said that there was a hat. No. Anyways, we're 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 gonna pretend that you're not dysfunctional. <laughs> we're gonna pretend very hard, but I'm not gonna pretend like I can stay awake. So y'all have a lovely night. Hey. Good night. Good night. Good night. Paul. Bye, Paul. Always fun to be here. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Oh. And then there were however many. James said he was going to join us and he lied. Did James say he was going to join us or did James just like jump in for five seconds? I don't know. 
I think he might have just been uh, doing that because I was asking for uh, people's favorite alignment charts. And I think he said something about the pizza. Um, which uh, I, I had made the alignment chart, which yes, maybe people saw I that I made, I made the Delve I'm, alignment I'm chart. Pretty sure the five people that are actually in our Discord server that pay attention saw. I hope they did. Um, I, uh, I, I, ma I made that alignment chart. Um, I think I got everything correct. I don't know. But um, but then something came across my path. I'm going to try to find something. Um, while I look this up, the first thing that happened was we had that discussion of like the Futurama um, alignment charts, and I found two, and they were completely different from one another. So, so I <clears throat> I don't know what to do, man. I, I can't. I can't help you. We we thought we had it down, but both of those alignment charts had it wrong from what you thought they were. Um, and uh, so, yeah. Alignment charts are weird. It just kind of showcases the fact that I still don't quite know what I would consider to be, like, chaotic and what I would consider to be lawful or or good or evil um i figured that josiah puffy pants was chaotic neutral because sometimes he's good and sometimes he's bad in my head but he is always chaotic so for me that's chaotic neutral got you i mean that made sense to me a shop kid named cookie cokey coke coke Cook. A shop kid named Cook is crashing into the transport pod nearby. If he survives the impact, he'll be badly wounded. Uh, okay, so what are you going to do? Oh, I might rescue him. See if he can recruit him. What are you doing? You're relaxing socially. No, you're rescuing Coke. Cook. I don't know. It's two O's and a K-E. Cook. Probably Cook. Yeah, you relax socially and then go rescue this kid. So, uh, do you recruit people for your uh, donkey organ harvesting ASMR? Or? Yes, they, yes. You don't want to yeah. know what they're doing with the donkeys, though. Uh, this is not a movie by uh... Eli Roth. <laughs> no, uh... <laughs> I'm just gonna throw Kevin that Smith. out there. It's not a Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> it's not clerks is what i'm getting at it should be clerks. oh no he died from blood loss rip i guess oh. i'll just strip his body and reclaim his fabric my bad my bad okay this this is this is the thing that I, i'll give you an example um i had not seen these before but uh, this is this is one for actually the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, but tell tell me what you think of this. Uh, Why don't you have pants? Holy shit! I didn't realize this person didn't have pants. I'm sorry. Um. So, Anyways, <laughs> I, and I, and just as as a comparison, I have another one that uh, that that's Sonic, <laughs> so that's more colorful. Anyway. Uh, what I'm showing you right there are uh, seven by seven alignment charts. And Why? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That that's too many and confusing. That's and I like all the pictures, and I just keep staring at all of them. Yeah, exactly. That's far too many and t far too confusing and useless. Yeah, like, I. Why would you? No, this is no. Yeah, I, uh, I, 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 I saw this, and when I did, I thought to myself, wow, I don't even know what these, ter I don't think these terms even mean anything anymore, <laughs> like, uh, because, uh, like, exalted, and then vile is down, and, uh, there's, uh, chaotic, but then anarchic and absolute are above them, and I, I feel like terminology just kind of goes out the door at a certain point. 
Yeah, at some point you're splitting a very thin hair. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what the difference... What, what the true difference between, like, rebel and chaotic, or chaotic and anarchic, or what exalted actually is supposed to mean, rather than good, rather than moral. Like, um, because I feel like moral and good are almost two different terminologies all of their own they don't really they don't really even work on a on a scale so yeah this is this is kind of one of those things that um i just i i saw it and i i was like so confused by it but also fascinated that somebody went to the trouble to say hey you know how they have that uh that whole like uh, 3 by 3 grid where people could fall into it what if we really complicated the hell out of that and <laughs> just just made so many more boxes <laughs> the fact that somebody actually went through the trouble to figure that out man it's impressive it's impressive stuff um there are also the, the slightly more manageable 5x5 five five grids. Um, slightly more manageable, he says. Well, let, let me see. I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, this, this is the 5x5 five five grid for the office. Um, <coughs> which, I think at that point they're just trying to do uh, levels of... Uh, good, like they're just trying to give you a couple levels of good and evil, and and of uh, chaotic and lawful. Um, oh, good, he has pants on now. My guy has pants on now. Sorry, that's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's okay, chaotic well. neutral. <laughs> First of all, he was unhappy because he was nude. Uh, second of all, uh, when you create excellent or greater items in this game, they can be artworks or pieces of art. So the bed that I made for this guy, since he, his marriage was called off and he now had to sleep on the floor, so I had to make him a new bed. So he got a wooden bed, and it was excellent quality. It's a piece of art. It's author. Uh, what's him? Its title is Lullaby with Poverty. Okay. That's that all the artwork, uh, and it says an engraving on this furniture represents four landmines. Okay, that's it. That's that's it. What? <laughs> that's what? All they give you. <laughs> that's uh, that's how that's the art the piece of art this bed is. It's an engraving on the, it's a bed with an engraving of four landmines. That's peaceful. That's super peaceful. I don't understand some of these things sometimes. I am. I thought you were going to get into pants with donkeys. And... What? I don't. What happens know if what... I look up donkey pants? <laughs> How about you? I don't. You don't want to know. Wait. There, wait. There might be. YouTube it suggests donkey wearing pants. I want to know. Oh my God! There's video of donkeys wearing pants. <laughs> 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 oh my god and you know what that donkey is pulling it off that's impressive <laughs> i have never seen that don that donkey is not doing badly hey i wonder if i have a picture donkey wearing pants wait wait a second i could i could find something for the discord wait a second here this is i, I... donkeys have really good fashion sense did you did you know that? What donkeys have great fashion sense? Yeah. No, I did not know that. Yeah, they really do. Oh, oh, here's 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 a great one. Here's a great one. I I will I will share this image because I got to tell you, this donkey is pulling it off. This is this is great. Check it. Check out the amazing. Look at that. That is fashionable. That donkey. That donkey has some fashionable leggings going on. There are some that have stripes. Oh my god. This is a... Oh no, I got a better one. This is a donkey with pajamas. Why? This is... Why? This is donkey pajamas. <laughs> Why? <laughs> 
deal with it, Alex. It's doggy pajamas. <laughs> I don't understand. Oh my god, Alex, this is what you're gonna see <laughs> That's in Rim I I'm gonna show you this is the next image you're gonna see in Rimworld. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Listen, there's over fourteen thousand mods for Rimworld. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think this needs to be one. <laughs> Donkey not Just only has pants, it has a shirt and a little backpack for its first day of school. <laughs> Why are you like this? You know, <laughs> oh my god, I found a donkey going to meeting. Look at that. <laughs> You got the love. It's got the little sun hat. It's a donkey with a sun hat, Alex, and a crop top. And those those jeans are very flattering. I don't understand. <laughs> this, is, this is what happens. Rimworld is a fascinating game where you can make donkeys wear pants whenever you want. People should buy this game and play it on their own. Your colonists may die, but the image of a donkey wearing pants will live forever. You know, <clears throat> this is what happens when Alex starts talking and I look stuff up. Alex should stop. It should not talk. <laughs> this is what will happen. This is why we can't have nice things. Oh. This is, this is fascinating. So, it, so RimWorld. Now I have a question. Oh, Rimworld, God, is, that, yeah. is that like a procedurally generated game? Is that what Yes. It is? Oh, okay. Uh, depends what you... How, how do we mean in this sense? Do we mean procedurally generated? Um, I guess what I would mean is uh, similar to like how uh, Minecraft would be procedurally generated. Sort of. The worlds are generated randomly, so the planet is generated upon creating your game. All right. Um, and it's got a ton of tiles, but it's not like it's generated every time you load the game. Oh, uh, okay. So it's it is similar to uh, Minecraft in that sense, yes. Okay, that's that's also kind of similar to like No Man's Sky as far as procedural. Like once once you discover a planet, that planet is the way the planet is. And yeah, I guess yeah. that makes sense. So once you discover this planet, it is the way it is, or once you generate the planet. Once you're in your tile set, because you're on a, a single map tile for your settlement, typically, uh, the yeah. map tile will not change every time you load. Right. Oh, it's, look, there's Megasloth. It's not like the Diablo style, where the layout is changed. Old Diablo style, you mean? Oh, in the new ones, did oh, yeah, the, new, the new Diablo 3 does that too, kind of-ish. Yeah, where you go into a dungeon, and the dungeon isn't laid out the same way. Right. Or the it's overworlds not like were that. not laid out the same way. Yeah. Right. It's it's not like that because once you generate your, your map, it's the map is the map is the map. Yeah. Now Inquisitor Martyr, on the other hand, which is an isometric AR ARPG like Diablo esque, um, mm -hmm. is sort of procedurally generated because each you don't have an open world map. You have um each each thing that you do, each uh, what is it? It's not map based; it's mission based. Are your missions randomly generated? Yes, um, you can gotcha. get randomly generate them, and maps are randomly generated. So you have a mission, and it takes place on a map tile set that's been randomly generated. So. RimWorld, for the record, is actually... Its initial release date was 2016. Was it? Yep. Initial release date wow. was July 15th, 2016. Uses the Unity engine. Has a 10 out of 10 on Steam. It's uh, fantastic if you like storytelling games. 97% liked this video game. It's from Ludion Studios, and this is the first time I had ever really heard of them. Um... They also, I believe, made uh, Prison Architect. 
Oh, is that the studio? Oh, okay. Um, Ludeon Studios is uh, an independent game developer. Um, I I actually I don't know if they did. I I would have to look this up. Let me see here. I believe they did because I mean I have Prison Architect. I'll just look that up. Prison Architect. I played some of Prison Architect. I wasn't I wasn't enthralled with it. I didn't. Oh, okay. Well, this was developed by Double Eleven, and publisher was Paradox Interactive, actually. Okay, yeah. It's, it's in the same vein, though, so I thought they were the same because it looked like the um, same game style. But I guess they are not the same people. They just have similar art style. Uh, yeah. People also searched for Eric Barone. My man! My boy, Eric! Is Eric Barone. Eric Barone's the man who made oh, Stardew Valley. Oh. He's concerned ape. Um, oh. He is, he is he is the concerned ape. Um, the man who single-handedly made yeah. cool. Stardew cool Valley. Boy. So I, I, I'm being ambushed. I'm offering help to this person whose name is Lips. I don't know why their name is Lips, but I'm offering help. Because they're... they're in trouble and i went and i'm getting ambushed by someone with a limestone club and they're from the pirate faction the dark face beaters i love this i love this game what and i'm shooting them because i have a charge rifle okay um and then everything <laughs> and then everything went wrong <laughs> um okay you Wow, that is the craziest uh, scenario that I've ever heard about, Alex. Um, His dark face beaters. Their left kidney was destroyed. I shot it. I don't know what to do with that information. Oh, they're dead. Ha ha, I killed them. Ha 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 ha, they're dead. Was it because of the kidney? <laughs> Probably. That's that's almost sad. Uh, um, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh... Well, actually, because I shot the crap out of him, but you know, the yeah, yeah, you shot the crap out of him, and so you shot him in the intestines. I just, I just shot him a lot. You shot him. You shot him in the general intestinal area. That's why he, you, you shot the crap out of him. You. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, fine. Um, well, that, that's been, <laughs> that's been fun, uh, talking about RimWorld, didn't, didn't know we were gonna do that on this episode, so, hey, we learn something new every day. Um, <laughs> what? Okay, well, I guess I, the, the answer to the question that I was gonna ask, what are you playing, Alex has already answered that, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know exactly what Alex is playing. He's been playing RimWorld. Uh, you've you've also been playing some of um, uh, Martyr too, right? Yeah, I've been playing a lot of that. So yeah, are those pretty much the two that you've been alternating between? Yep. Okay. We know that Paul pretty was playing much. Warframe way too much. <laughs> Which hey, more power to him. I played for a while. But I'm not going to again. <laughs> um, uh, DC, what are you playing right now? Well, to tide me over until Animal Crossing, I've been playing Bloodstained, uh, yes. Ritual of the Night. Yes. That's been pretty good. I like it. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It's uh, up near the top of my soon-to-be-released uh, list on the new video whenever that comes out. Probably next week. Um, yes, uh, shameless plug, I guess I should say, is that the, the next big video that I had in the works, I've, I've completed now, and I'm probably going to set to release on Friday or Saturday. And um, it's uh, every game that I played from 2019 ranked from best to worst. Uh, so it is, it is quite a few... <laughs> whole bunch of games 
where I wow. did very, very short reviews, basically going from, from the, the absolute best, which people are probably aware of now because of the other videos I did, down, down to basically the ones I really, really hated. Um, uh, everything that was officially released in 2019. Uh, and then I had to like do research and stuff, y'all, because I I oh. realized that there were some new games that I played, but they actually came out in 2018, so they didn't make the list. Sorry. Um, but uh, anything that did technically come out in 2019, I put on I put on Mr. List. So, so that's fun. Mr. List on Mr. List, Mr. Lister. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it, it it was fun to put together. Uh, it's very, very hard to put lists like that together, though, because even now I keep thinking that I put the list together in the wrong way. <laughs> like, I still say, I, I still keep thinking, eh, did this really deserve to be higher on the list than the other one? I still don't know. But at a certain point, you have just so many games on there that you're like, yeah, it's good. It's fine. <laughs> this, this seems right and natural and fine. <laughs> um... So anyway, I'm just uh, finalizing that. Uh, hopefully, if you are uh, a patron, uh, you will be getting that a little bit earlier. As soon as I can render the video and everything, uh, I'll put it up for Patreon, and uh, then it will go out to the general public, uh, hopefully uh, by the end of the week. Um, so, uh, and yeah, Animal Crossing, yeah, hey. Yeah. that's That's coming hey. out. And everyone rejoiced. Um... What is Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I saw the thing that girlfriend reviews did uh on that and uh it makes me wonder like what feature of the new Animal Crossing are you most excited about? Crafting. Uh, making stuff. Making stuff. Yeah. I do like the making, making stuff. Making bacon pancakes. It, it, yes. Th <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Finn. Um, Jake. Jake. I yep. remembered it was the dog, but I couldn't remember the dog's name. I could remember Finn. Um. Okay, so crafting. That's that's cool. Crafting makes everything better. Yeah. Well. Yeah, it does. It doesn't. I can always. craft in this game. Yeah. <laughs> Can you craft you craft lips or pants? No, their their Donkeys? name is Celia Lips Joyce. You play some strange games, that. man. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got I I got so many uh, I got questions I never even knew I wanted to ask before tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's cool. Um, what have I been playing? Actually, uh. In the interest, like, after I got done with what I felt was, like, the homework, I was playing through, like, games from 2019. <laughs> uh, after I got done with that, I was like, okay, have I finally played through everything that was on my list? And no, I don't want to add anything new to that list, so let's just move on. <laughs> and, I, uh, and I started playing uh, Kingdoms of Amalur again, for reasons. Um, there you go. Yeah. Uh, because uh, the goal is uh, that if we do a uh, a power surge, uh, a pilot episode is um, we're probably going to be using that as our uh, format, our uh, our game to uh, to tabletopify for the first episode. Um, so I wanted to get back and do a little bit of uh, of playing with that. Uh, there is still the possibility that we might actually do that as like a uh, a live episode, uh, working through that whole thing. Uh, Alex might even play it. Uh, we we'll we'll see if what we're doing for streaming options. Um, but uh, have you played that in a, in a little while? King is Kingdoms of Amalur. Hmm. If not. I was I have not played in a while. Yeah, I was figuring that it must have been a, a little bit. Um, it's a uh, it's good. I it is good. It's a good game. Uh, going back and playing it again, I was like, oh yeah, this was real good. 
there's there's parts where it can feel like a little bit of doing the same thing over and over again, but it's not terrible uh, in that regard. And what I really liked about it was I tried to explain to people that basically Kingdoms of Amalur is um, imagine fable, but fable is 80 hours long. It's basically what it is. It's it's the same general concept. Uh, the world design is kind of similar. Uh, it's it's that kind of bright fantasy setting, um, and uh, and and it, there's there's something that feels very enchanting about it. But the lore is uh, really deep, and uh, the RPG elements are a little bit more prominent, and the decisions that you make are definitely more um, obvious. I suppose, uh, but uh, yeah, just being able to choose your play styles and all of the different options you have for, for your weapons loadouts and your skills and everything, and that it's just incredibly long. It's just, it's the epic RPG variant in some ways of what they did with Fable, and uh, I don't mind that whatsoever. Of course, it always ends up being me just using chakrams on everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, a lot of chakrams. There's a well, there's a lot of weapons you can choose from, but honestly, the second I got uh, you get a pair of chakram, you're just kind of like, I want these all the time. <laughs> just just a couple giant spinning elemental blades of death, <laughs> circles yeah. of death that you just throw through the air. <laughs> I mean, they're good, so and they're me and they're they're mid range weapons. And they're fun and they're fast. They're pretty much the best weapons in the game. More they or less. they kind of are. Uh, they're 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 fast enough. They they will attack from range, which is very helpful. They always have elemental abilities on them. Um, and uh, yeah, my favorite part about it is that the basic combo move actually has like um like some area of effect. So if you have guys that are like coming around you that last, like, little throw that you do with them comes back and, like, curves around you a little bit and just knocks them back. So, uh, great for crowd control. Uh, yeah. Uh, usually that, and then, like, my secondary weapon, uh, bow. I found that that's handy for long range. Or if you're doing short range, you get the daggers. You get the daggers and get, get right in there. Great for stealth kills. Also fun. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, been playing that uh, a bit, and um, actually, what I'm doing right now though is uh, I am playing through. It's not going to take me very long, but I'm playing through uh, Batman: The Enemy Within, the Telltale series. Uh, oh, fun. I took a little bit of a break from Kingdoms of Amalur because I was like thirty something hours in already. <laughs> And said, uh, hey, I'm going to try playing a couple other things. Some palate cleansers. So I thought I might go into some of the episodic story games that I have hanging around on my <laughs> on my drive. Uh, so I might do Life is Strange after that. Uh, been meaning to play that for a while. And, um, and then back to Amalur. Cause I got <laughs> because I... Because I have some leveling to do, and I'm only in the plains of Arendelle right now, so there's uh, like you jerk. there's like four other areas that I have to get to. I don't. I didn't get the uh, Legend of Dead Kel expansion, and I've never played the Teeth of Naros. I I haven't. Legend of Dead Kel was fun though. This is I think me. I think I have both. I've never actually played them though. You never did? Oh, The Legend of Dead Kel I enjoyed. I did not buy the Teeth of Narrows. I hadn't bought that one. There are apparently a couple cool like armor sets and stuff from it that were neat. Um, but this is like me uh, buying KOA because it went on sale on my Xbox. And I was like, well, for the few dollars that I pay for it, I might as well buy it. Um, when I had already bought it before. <laughs> From, from my older system. But I was super happy. A uh, couple things that surprised me. First of all, um, there are like sorcery packs and stuff that are free, but I can't I can't get the items to actually show up in my in my loot 
box thing, my, my treasure box. So I'm going to assume that those just don't work anymore. But what automatically um, comes into the box is the shepherd armor. Yep. So, which, which is cool, I guess. It's kind of nice. Oh, yeah. It, it the, the 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 commander shepherd armor uh will last you i i'd say i used it pretty much until i was like level 10 or 11. you know you can you can use it for a good long time it's better than anything else that it drops pretty much that yeah. was that was part of a crossover event that they did because that was the same year that mass effect 2 came out and so they had this whole thing. Uh, they were both being published by EA. Um, and so they were like, well, you know, in, in the interest of synergy, uh, if, you've, if you've bought Kingdoms of Amalur, then there's going to be some, there, there was like some special armor that you could unlock in Mass Effect 2. And if you had bought Mass Effect 2, you got special armor in Kingdoms of Amalur. That was yes, themed I didn't, correctly. Yeah. I didn't uh, have Mass Effect, so it's fine. Yeah, now I think that they I think they eventually just uh made it part of the regular pack. <laughs> I think at a certain point they were like, "Yeah, we'll just give it to you. Here, enjoy." Cuz there's no way to acquire it otherwise in the game. So, yeah. But yeah. it looks real this good. Person? I don't know where. Oh, you're over there. Okay. I was like, where the fuck is this person? They're over there somewhere. Wandering. The other person's sad wandering because they're in a bad mood. The uh, the nice thing about playing uh, an older game on the newer system, though, is your load times are significantly reduced. Yeah. That's always fun to play. Uh, yeah. Cool. If we if we get you on uh, stream playing a KOA, you probably won't even see a load screen. <laughs> I still do. They're very. They're not long though. You might uh, see that there is a load screen, but remember, Kingdoms of Amalur is now ten years old. Is it really? Yeah, it came out in twenty ten. Damn. It came out in twenty ten. I still have a load screen, although when I get my new processor, I probably will have a much less of a load screen. Yeah. I know that there is a point where uh, if you have a good enough computer, there's a lot of games where the load screens don't even come into play. Uh, you probably would have still experienced them with Anthem for unknown reasons. Unknown reasons. Well, to the point where I I think when I did a thing about Anthem, I showed like the load screen as like the little stinger at the end of the video. And yeah. it's it's like a minute and change of just a load screen to load into like, and sometimes the load screens come in the middle of your flight or something. Like it was uh, it was a bit excessive in terms of what it was presenting. Um, and and it didn't necessarily justify that considering the size of the areas, but. Load screens are fun, folks. Yeah, definitely f super fun. It definitely made it super funny. With the with the newer systems, though, it definitely improved experiences. Like even the uh, the Fallout New Vegas, which I uh, I had gone back and played, and then had to play all the DLCs because, <laughs> of there course, I did. Oh. DLCs, all the DLCs. Hey, those those are those are four damn fine DLC packs for New Vegas. Those 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 were those were good. Honest Hearts is probably the weakest of them, but it it that that was still not bad. Zion National Park is cool. Um, Dead Money is uh kind of its own thing. Uh, more of like a horror survival game that that snuck its way into <laughs> to uh, New Vegas, um, but that that was neat. Um, Lonesome Road is is a good way to like end the Courier story. But then yeah, old Old World Blues still the best. The the, the thing that I would definitely suggest anybody who 
is playing New Vegas. If you if you're playing one of those expansions, definitely play Old World Blues because it reminds you of like old 1950s sci-fi. Um with like laser guns and then Dr. Mobius has has robo scorpions that he sends after you. <laughs> which is great. Um who doesn't love robo scorpions? Uh well, uh not the think tank. I did I did love the whole narrative that you find out about when you get to Big Mountain in that expansion where you find out that so many of the the horrible creatures that you've encountered in the Mojave like the Night Stalkers and the Cazadors and, and all of them, um, that they were all created by these floating brains in jars. <laughs> oh yeah, the Think Tank is uh, definitely a thinky, thinky tanky. Yeah, the think the Think Tank also has some of the best dialogue in the entire game. <laughs> it's yeah. the funniest shit ever. <laughs> how, how they talk, it's the it's the best thing ever. And there, there's just there's so many amazing things. I love the stealth suit that talks to you, <laughs> and the, and the and the K nine thousand gun <laughs> that literally is just powered by a dog brain, and it has little waggly ears and woofs when you <laughs> you shoot it. It's it's the craziest stuff ever. I love it so much. Such a great game! Such a great game! Oh, oh, geez, there's a speleopede. What's a speleopede? My... You're gonna have to explain this. Oh, no, Duck Twenty Six has died. Duck Twenty Six. What happened to the first twenty five ducks? Um, I have ducks and I slaughter them. Okay, you know this. <laughs> Don't you attack my alpaca? This is why you're not allowed to play Untitled Goose Game. <laughs> but hey, you know, if you're that interested in murdering ducks, um, you should really play Kingdom Hearts. Because <laughs> I've got one particular duck that I would absolutely <laughs> not mind at all. <laughs> Take it out. Um, Stop killing my ducks! Yeah. Hopefully one's named Donald, because... <laughs> oh my god, stop killing ducks, you stupid bug. Um, it's a creature. It's gonna get murdered. Yep, I'm trying to kill it. Yep, stop it. Yeah. Well, um... Okay, then. I guess, uh... Now that Alex is killing off ducks... And I've put a hit out on Donald Duck, and we've found out how well donkeys can pull off a nice pair of jeans. Uh, we've pretty much exhausted our topics for the evening. <laughs> um, floating brains. All these jars. animals need to be tended to. Oh wait, you need to go tend to. Uh, you need to go rescue your 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 warg because I have a warg. Okay. Oh. Ducks, so many ducks just died. At least I'm going to be able to slaughter them for meat. Or... So many of my animals were just injured, though. My boar, my buck, my alpaca, duck 34, taro, my... Oh, another duck just died. Ham taro? <laughs> yeah, I know. It came with the name taro. Ham taro, tar tar Ham ham's revenge. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's got a lot of injuries. Whole body blood loss, jaw left ear, body tail left kidney, right lung, spine, rear left leg, front left paw, rear right paw, front left paw, rear left paw. I feel also, like... you can, you can, there's a lot, you can have a lot of injuries in this game. Right. I feel like, like the, the next live show that we do is just you playing RimWorld and we're just doing background commentary. Oh boy. <laughs> Duck thirty four is no longer incapable of walking. So, oh, what see, does that my, mean? My, it, you can you can get them incapacitated. Um, my buck had its nose shattered. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah. This is a this uh this duck had its left eye cut out and its tail cut off. Um. So this game is sponsored by OSHA. 
This one has left <laughs> and right eyes cut out. Go oh, God. Or the ASPCA. It had its tail destroyed. Oh, man. I need oh, Sarah Buck McLaughlin to do a video talking about how you could be an angel for the creatures of RimWorld. Because <laughs> I feel like this is, has gotten <laughs> to that point. In the arms of... <laughs> I don't know if I trust Alex with the uh, animals anymore. Don't give, don't give Alex any animals. He's gonna do to them what he does to his player characters when he, when he <laughs> runs a game. Just random slaughter. Just it wasn't random. My apparently my warg decided to go over here and it got attacked by a lot of spiliopedes and. Uh, Mega scarabs. What is cave? a speleopede? Okay, I'm gonna have to look up speleopede. It's a. It's. Oh, it is. Here, a speleopede. Speleopede. I don't know. It says it. All it says is dead body of a speleopede. <laughs> okay, a speleopede, folks, is. Here we go. Speleopede, from the designation, is. Oh, actually, you know what I'll do? I'll just bring it up here so people can see. Speleopede. Um, Spielpede. I'm glad you have medical and, uh, and animals. Here we go. Here we go. You're tending to all my animals. Here now. we go. A Spielpede, folks. Wild is... horse no longer incapable of walking. Can inhabit any terrain where an infestation has spawned. They are dangerous in combat but slow in open ground. Their body is composed of a head, head claw, mouth, pronotum, shell, Elytris, left and right, and two pair of legs, from and back. Guessing they mean front and back. They're a bioengineered bug, the size of a sheep. Yeah, they're they're not fun. So basically, these are mantisaurs from outer worlds. <laughs> They're, they're something. Kind of. Or they're killer ants from oh, Fallout. I have insect meat now. Great. Because all these, these assholes that I just murdered that came into my base, I have insect meat. How do these things have a market value? They have a market value of 200. Are That's... you looking at the RimWorld wiki? Yeah. I'm looking at the RimWorld wiki. And it says... That they have a market value of two hundred. Yep. Don't understand that. Yep. Yep. But they do. So anyway, we learned a lot about RimWorld today, uh, and uh, that Alex cannot be trusted with it, and um, and so uh, we're uh, we're, <laughs> we're still looking to uh, yeah. Possibly do as 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 a live show, uh, a uh, a little trial run of um, Power Surge. I have a pretty good idea of like the general structure that I wanted to do of it, but it would be fun to like uh, bounce some ideas off of people. We'll try to let people know when we're going to be doing that. Um, we're uh, we're still kind of getting back into the flow a little bit, and uh, by the time. We do our next live episode. I guess I will have figured out what my April Fool's uh, episode uh, my video was. <laughs> I guess. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, no clue. <laughs> um, still still trying to figure that one out. Uh, it, it's going to be something, folks. It's, it's going to be something. <laughs> Uh, it's definitely going to be something. Yeah, yeah. It might just literally be the documentary for Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We might, we'll, we'll see. It might be, it might be something different. My, my latest uh, marketing ploy <laughs> to try and get people. <laughs> hey, you know what? Those hey, are fun. a donkey is pregnant. Donkeys can't get pregnant. What? Well, not when they're wearing those pants. No, I can't. <laughs> well. Of course you can't have the donkey 
this game. <laughs> They're trying their hardest, no. but it just won't work. Just doesn't work hard enough. No. That's there are there any are there any pictures of doggy chastity belts? <laughs> Wait, hold that thought. <laughs> if anybody ever looks up like my internet browser history, I am so fucked. <laughs> um, I won't be able to run for public office ever again. Actually, I think it's a prerequisite for, for public office that you've looked up doggy chastity belts. Um, <laughs> at some point. It's no, all that comes up are chastity belts for men, pretty much. All right then. Hey, that's a that's a thing. Um, well, there's something so I can't then. unsee. Uh, I'm Thanks so for glad that. this stuff isn't on screen. Huh? Oh yeah, you wouldn't want to see what I'm looking at right now. Um, that's that's a whole other thing. Yeah, don't don't worry, folks. You can't unsee that. <laughs> I uh, I avoided that for for everybody who uh, who's watching right now. You didn't have Wonderful. to see that. Thanks. Perfect. Lovely. So anyway, um, ooh, mega spiders. Yeah, yeah. Not actually. Too. They are not actually a spider. <laughs> I lo I love how they're like mega spiders. Not actually a spider. <laughs> It's a genetically engineered giant insectoid the size of a bear. Oh, there's a mad raccoon now. Why is there a mad raccoon? Um, oh, it's mad. Because he just wants to watch all the acorns burn? I don't know, man. Like, you, the, game, the, the game sounds weird. And, uh, and I don't know what to make of, of RimWorld. It's it's fantastic, and my turret is going after the raccoon. Cool. And it got the you, raccoon. You have a turret? Okay, I'm listening again. I I, want I this it was turret. a mad raccoon, a minigun turret, and it it destroyed its liver and shot it in the body. Great, great. There, there. You know, you can uh, you can give people here here. Let me look at this. There's another mad raccoon? Mm -hmm. What even? You can harvest their organs. You can harvest heart, left lung, right lung, left kidney, right kidney, liver. You can euthanize them by cut, anesthetize. You can install peg legs, hands, wooden feet, and dentures. You can install dentures in I mean, the mad squirrel. Not in the squirrel. Not in the squirrel, Nathan. Oh yeah, because that would have been weird. You just use it as an attack squirrel. You. Oh well, then that makes. Look up boom rats, sense. Nathan. Look, look up boom rats and boomalopes. <sighs> These are things. Are they like beefaloes? B boom, boom, boom rats. You can. Uh, they produce chem fuel, and you can harvest them, but they explode. Oh, the Boomtown Rats. Yeah, they were a rock band from the 1970s. They formed in Dublin. And uh, let's see here. They had wonderful hits like I Don't Like Mondays. Did you just shoot the fucking turret with your sniper rifle, you dummy, dummy asshole? Looking after number one. The Boomtown Rats. Why are you so bad with this sniper rifle? Boom. Oh, you jerk. Wait, do the Boomtown Rats have a new... Oh, wow. Hey, everybody. Good news. The Boomtown Rats are back with a new album this year. <laughs> Citizens of Boomtown. Their, new, their first new studio album in 36 years. I know that everyone's excited. <laughs> hey, for March, this is breaking news. Congratulations, everybody. Boomtown, thank you for telling me about Boom Rats, Alex. I did not even know that you were a fan of, like, 70s 
Irish rock bands. Man, this guy is really bad at the sniper rifle. Like, he's got really good shooting skill, and he just was I, terrible at I that. love that you're not even listening to what I'm talking about. You're talking about Boomtown. Yeah. Because cause when I'm I look confused. up... Because when I look up Boom Rats, it comes up with Boomtown Rats, an Irish band from Dublin that, that was popular 36 years ago as a rock band and is now apparently producing a brand new album in 2020 after nearly four decades. That's why... Do they need the money that badly? Was this apparently, in sync? Apparently. Well, they, apparently they got... They got stuff going on. Morrissey yeah. has a new album out this year for reasons. I don't know. <laughs> reasons. Things, things are happening, folks. Um, in other news, <laughs> um, I in other related news. In other related news, um, I I did want something came up, and uh, Esther, uh. Something something came up oh, yeah. on my feed, and I was trying to figure out if it's still available and thing. And it was actually D and D related, which um oh no, of course now it's not going to come up. Oh wait, I can get it on my um do 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 do. I bet I can get it on the thing. There was a a supplement. It's it's from DM's Guild, but it started getting me thinking about some things. Um, yeah, where is this? This should be in, this should be in a thing. Why are there wild guinea pigs? I don't know. What are they even used for? <sighs> this game has so many weird animals. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting that. Uh, I can get wild Yorkshire Terriers, all right? Wow. Okay. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Can you get wild corgis? I don't know if corgis are a thing, but Yorkies are a thing. Yeah. Yep. That's pretty great. Anyway, um, so yeah, the thing that had showed up on my feed, and I was interested in this. It's a good way to kind of like, it's it's an actual like tabletop thing that we could talk about. Um, multi-class in Dungeons and Dragons in a new way with Master of None. Uh, so Master of None is actually from the DMs Guild. Uh, and, uh, basically, as we all know, there is an option to multi-class. I am going to see if I can actually, can I link this right to the, from my phone? I bet I can do this. I bet I can do this, folks. I can, I can link the article. Yeah, perfect. Hey, look, there it goes. Now I can... I've been trying to find it online, and I can't. The only place I can seem to find it is on my phone. Um, so if, uh, if you look at that, basically, the, uh, the idea here is instead of just having a system where you just simply say, I'm going to multi-class into another class... Uh, this is uh, seeking to make an actual narrative way that different classes would move into those other classes. So instead of the, uh, the, the example that they give is instead of saying, oh, I decided that my level 5 cleric wanted to have Eldritch Blast, so now he's part warlock. Instead, you would say, my deity married an otherworldly patron and they're cool, so I'll be like a stepson to them and get cool powers like Eldritch Blast. So, so, uh, so I thought that that what? was kind of, an, yeah, exactly. I thought that that was kind of interesting, the idea that, um, if you're looking to multi-class to actually make, like, a sometimes convoluted, but in a narrative reason... <laughs> Why you might actually uh, be in that. It's not just that I go into that other class. There's an actual reasoning for it. Uh, and so this is called Master of None Mounting Classing Variants and Roleplay Suggestions. Um, so that would be like a roleplay suggestion. I don't know how you feel about multiclassing in terms of the roleplaying aspect of it. 
Um, I mean, I have uh, the last... Not that I've played in like two years now, but the last character I had that I was going to multi-class... I was going to do either of my characters could have been multi-class. Yeah. Um, uh, Hephaestus could have... Depending how the story went, I was considering multi-classing him into Barbarian um, for Rage. Not mm-hmm. for the class feature, but because it made sense story-wise that would have happened. Mm. Um, oh, Sappy's in, in, in... Okay, cool. They're lovers now. Cool. He's got a new girlfriend, and his old girlfriend's already here. That's great. Okay. Anyways, so uh, depending, because he had lost his base, you know, his brother, essentially, so, like, it was a person keeping him rooted to... Not the more bestial side of his druided, uh, druidic shapeshiftingness. So without yeah. his brother there, I was like, well, this makes sense. Because if he lost his brother, he doesn't really know how to go. He could kind of go primal savage, and that would make barbarian make a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, on the other side, I had a warlock who I had considered cross-classing into paladin. Mm. Because he was a noble uh, background warlock. Mm-hmm. And he had his warlock patron was a sentient weapon because uh, he was hexblade, and so it was like, well, it could be from you know not a bad thing because you think he was chaotic good maybe I don't remember exactly what his line was, but it was like this would make sense for him as well because you know with the, with his background you know being a warlock to a weapon and the weapon could be aligned that way his family was a line of warlocks and paladins mm-hmm. so uh, it makes sense yeah yeah uh rembrandt could have potentially uh multi-classed into a rogue um oh, that makes sense too it does there is only one real problem is that actually by the rules i don't think he would be able to because he notoriously had horrible dexterity for <laughs> for a shadow monk. Um, so yeah, his dex his dex was actually pretty low, so I don't think it would meet the requirements necessary. I don't think there's requirements for becoming a certain class, though. Uh, I think that you're. I th- I thought that there were certain stats that have to be a a level. Uh, pretty sure no. Okay. Wait, I can DC can back me up on this if he wants. Uh, I will also look at something because I think I can find the thing that I was. Uh, if if I were to look at classes, in I'm just gonna look at D and D Beyond actually, and see. But if I were to look at, for instance, a rope. And I look at rules for rogues. I can find dexterity should be your highest thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also doesn't mean it has to be, because, like, my half-orc bard friend in the same game as that one was not a very good bard. <laughs> yeah, I I know. That's a, that's a common theme, is uh, making a character who's subpar not characters i mean yeah. it, it depends on why they're subpar like you don't have to min max and optimize either so it's you know well the the thing too about um rembrandt is that if you are, are playing a monk uh you sh- like it really helps to have high dexterity and wisdom because then your unarmored uh ac is is still pretty damn great but, but, if you're a tortle, like I was, that metric really goes out the window. Because you have a straight natural AC that doesn't get affected by bonuses or, or anything like that. So, so, that, so dexterity actually doesn't, doesn't really have as big a role uh, right. for, for me. Um <laughs> So when you uh, when you multi class, there's a prerequisite for there? a class. Yeah. Ah. 
Uh, but if you're just building the class itself, the prerequisite doesn't really exist. But in current 5e, 5e, uh, fifth edition, there is um, prerequisites. For the multi-class. Like I feel like they discouraged multi-classing a bit in 5e. Like, not necessarily on purpose, but like, just as a result. Uh, yeah, that, and they also gave some really good uh, bonuses. They almost encourage the single class because they give some really good bonuses by having high levels in a certain uh, a, a certain tier, you know, by going down that yeah. list. Um, but I mean, uh, I, I did think that that was the case, that there were not it's not that you had prerequisites for a specific the character class that you're playing but if you're going to multi-class into another one you have to hit a certain you have to have a certain um metric like if it's if if you're a spell casting class your wisdom or your intelligence might have to be at a certain number before you're able to do that yeah, uh, 13 is the standard number so 13. if i wanted my bard to multi-class into a barbarian, I would need a strength of 13 mm -hmm. on my bard. Mm -hmm. So it's not too terribly high, but... Yeah. Yeah. It's... I think it was mostly there so that a, a purely dexterity-based character couldn't then say, but also, I'm a mage. Like... So, so that it it was at least somewhat in the realm of possibility that that character would be able to be that class, because it wouldn't make terrible sense for someone who doesn't have very high dexterity to then say, "I'm also a rogue now," because like maybe maybe it makes sense that Rembrandt is a monk because he was originally trained as a monk, but it wouldn't make a lot of sense for him to then. That, you know, all of a sudden be able to be trained as a rogue when his dexterity isn't very good. Like, like that, that's further down the pathway for him. Um, mm -hmm. But the ironic thing, though, is that I'm trying to think, like, his wisdom's really high, though. So, actually, there, there are some spellcasting options that he could get into. Um which does not seem to be <laughs> something something he would do uh, but i mean with wisdom you could go into dru mm -hmm. druid if you wanted a spell thing yeah yeah if i uh, if i wanted to I, I suppose i could do that too yeah it's i don't know uh whether i'll ever play uh with him again is is kind of up in the air <laughs> So, um, <coughs> Feels. so, oh, yay, some of my animals are finally fully healed, like my alpaca. You have a hellpaca? An I alpaca? Have an alpaca from... Oh. An alpaca from hell? No, it's an alpaca. From... I really wish that there was from... such a thing as a hellpaca now. Now uh, there is such a thing as an alpaca. All why right. Are you why are you mining? I I'm wanted this dugout first, and you're mining over here. Okay, that's thanks. Whatever. I'm yelling at my my pawns. Okay, I'm just yelling at. Them. I, I understand. Um, this is a. Uh, this is cool. Did they actually have official rules set up for um? Oh, okay. Uh, this is. Uh, did did they actually set up official rules for artificers? I haven't been on D and D Beyond. Yes, in a while. Oh, uh, Artificer are. came out with uh, Eberron Rising of the Last War, ah. and it's the first uh, class that they've sort of come out with since the player's handbook. Everything else has been subclasses. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that's that's good to know. I was starting to wonder if they were going to officially release it at, at some point. Um, it's uh, it's good that it was coming out. It was a class that I was actually interested in in trying to play. 
Uh, Everyone wants to play an artificer. I like the artillerist idea. Because I just want to set out turrets. <laughs> That's basically what I wanted to do. Is I just want to be turret man. <laughs> just said that. I had no. I had I had a fun idea of this like kid, who who was born into like poverty and and um, and but he has a really chipper attitude about everything and he wants to convince people that he's actually totally old enough to be adventuring and he's and so he doesn't have a lot of skills but his one thing that he's good is he's good at building things so like it makes perfect sense that he would go down that line. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, because because like realistically, he's not very strong and he's not very fast and he's <laughs> kind of a skinny scrawny kid. Um, and the only thing that he would really be good at is that he's you know uh, like child tech genius. So obviously, artificer makes perfect sense. Building things, yeah, yeah, making stuff. Um, which is actually kind of similar to um the character they play in the other game, which is a weird scientist, and I went into a realm of crafting a lot of different kinds of magical devices and mechanical stuff. And uh, so that's kind of the artificer class of that of that game, uh, which is, uh, as it turns out, also the hardest kind of thing to play. Uh, for a system that I was never familiar with. Like, like the, the old hands that have been playing this thing for a long time, they're like, yeah, we don't even know how to play a weird scientist, honestly. <laughs> like, like, it's real confusing. <laughs> how <to> play. <laughs> and, was, and literally it was the thing where it's like, I'm obviously going to play a weird scientist because then I can make a ton of 80s references <laughs> off of it. <laughs> Never, it, probably a a good thing to know is do not choose your character class over what jokes you can make. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not gonna end well. Um, I <laughs> did, but you've met me, so people know this is who I am. I can't help. Yeah. It's it's like yeah. Alex. I'll tell you, like I could run a game of D and D if you really wanted to try playing again, but realize it's going to be pretty free form, and there's going to be a lot of unnecessary puns, and it's just going to be yeah, the way it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Like I could I could help you scratch that that D and D itch, but I. It ain't gonna be all that satisfying for you. <laughs> it's, it's probably just gonna be me trying to run pre-existing modules and making a whole lot of stupid jokes along the way, and that's pretty. <laughs> it's 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 my, my whole idea was if I ever ran D and D, it would probably end up just being me saying, "Okay, you're in town. What do you want to do?" <laughs> Like, just, yeah. <laughs> what do you want to do? Ever, Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Figure it, it out, we'll work up, with it. That never ends up good, because you're like, you're in town, what do you want to do? And they're like, uh, I want to do this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They should have, like, oh, they probably do. They probably have just, like, where I could roll dice and just come up with a random encounter based on what the dice rolls. Like if I yeah, look, if, if I rolled a d twenty and I look at a list and it says okay you rolled a thirteen so this is the random thing that happens, um, I'd be relying on those a lot. <laughs> 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 That's every step of the way, and there'd probably be a cohesive storyline in it at the end, but but it would take a little while. <laughs> it would take a little while to get there. <laughs> it would take yeah. a little while to get there. I'm sorry. Um. But I think I think I would probably have to run it that way because I did try my uh, my big, like heady epic, opus and it didn't really go anywhere. <laughs> so was, <laughs> so it's like yeah, screw it. Next time I'm just flying by the seat of my pants to see what happens. Yeah, <laughs> screw it. I mean, you could you could play Hephaestus. Um, no, really no, mean. I wouldn't do that. that, that you, you don't you don't play characters from one campaign and another campaign. That's just no. 
I would. No. I, <laughs> um, I would. I have. I have. I have no. I, I, well, you know, the. I guess the thing is, is that, and this feels like a, a conversation for another time when we're not tired. But, uh, I I would kind of look at my characters, uh, in almost similar fashion to like. Uh, Marvel or DC Comics or something like that where you can have a character but then there are different kinds of worlds and versions of that character so that it can no. kind of exist in other places no because I wouldn't want to play a character I've already made for one game with one set of relationships and all that stuff in another game that's just weird to me well but yeah but you know what if if the if the Jetsons and the Flintstones can have a crossover event, anything's possible. <laughs> That's my feeling on it. Anything's possible in a world where the Hanna-Barbera cartoons can get together. And, and do no you matter... really... What? Do you really want my lycanthrope druid with Remora's hide armor mm -hmm. fucking everything up in a game you make? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's the problem here i don't understand the question what are you talking like like why not like like now with featured guest <laughs> i mean it's the only it's the only way that rembrandt and hephaestus could have like uh like one of those buddy cop team up <laughs> Rembrandt would love Ooh, it. Re Rembrandt's kind of meta as it stands, so that makes perfect sense. He's like the Deadpool of TNT. So it makes <laughs> perfect sense to have that kind of a, of a metric. So, okay, you're saying that you would want to start a new character from scratch. Typically. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, a part of me was kind of I, like, I, yeah. Yeah. Just because I have other, I have a lot of ideas for characters, so it makes sense that just pick one, go with it. But you just want to play your unicorn. Always, I always want to play the unicorn. I no, I I, 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 unicorn. I had a lot of different ideas that would let me play different kinds of classes and stuff too, because I. I've played monks a lot, so when uh, when we did the last one shot, when DC uh, did the last one shot, I was like, I really like it if Percy was a um, rogue instead of a monk now, because I never got to play a rogue, <laughs> and I'm wondering how they play. <laughs> um, and I think Percy, Percy actually works better as a rogue anyway. Kind of makes more sense. Um. My my Khajiit wannabe, basically. <laughs> Khajiit has many wares. <laughs> that is that is exactly how Percy sounds. I'm I made him speak very much like a Khajiit. Um, and uh, and and that's what he is. He's a Tabaxi, and so so he was just a Tabaxi. He he was a monk the first time I played him, and then after that I was like, eh. I think I'd prefer if he was a rogue instead. And you know what? Works really well as a rogue. I was impressed. I was like, yeah, I could see myself playing rogues more often. That's kind of fun. I like I like doing the backstabby damage. I like doing the sneak attackies. Those are those are fun. Backstabby damage is good. I like backstabby sneaky damage. I could definitely see where somebody could make their character kind of OP if you did do like a shadow if you did a monk rogue uh hybrid for a multi class which is totally doable actually yeah that could be that could be dangerous i could what fist damage sneak attacks that's the thing that's existed for a while nathan yeah but like i'm i'm thinking like okay monks they've got like the flurry of blows and all of that but then you also have the rogue with... Uh, I don't think you get a sneak attack on every... Well, I don't know. If they're flat-footed, you might. Yeah. See? Now now, now I'm starting to think, like, that would be a... That, that would be something. 
those are two like the skills that monks have and the skills that rogues have if you utilize their just basic skills together that's um that's a spicy meatball right there that's a that's that can that could really compound very quickly with the number of attacks that, that monks get and the amount of extra damage that rogues can dish out in the right circumstances that would be really bad. <laughs> um, that would be something to try. I don't know if I dare. It would be fantastic. It would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Yeah, there are some multi-classes that, that would be very interesting to to attempt. Um, but I have enough trouble figuring out how to play one class, so I don't know if I... If I would, uh, if I would attempt it myself, um, but uh, yeah, mostly a any excuse so that I I don't play a monk next time. I love monks. Oh, okay. I love monks, and I just make a monk paladin. There you go. A monk paladin. Yep, smite people with your fists, Nathan. You know what I wanted though is uh, I wanted to play. I had a character design for a. I think I actually made her. She. Uh. It was. Um. She was gonna be a. Um. Oh God. An Aarakocra, uh, way of Sun Soul monk. Cause I just like the idea of just having a fire bird. <laughs> um. Uh. And I started to re like way of Sun Soul is so cool. Like I. I just love the idea of being able to, like, chuck balls of light down on people. <laughs> <laughs> they have such cool stuff going on. <laughs> it's, it's super impressive. And then they have a, they have a, um, do I have the rules for Sun Soul? I don't know if I have the rules, rules for Sun Soul. I think I do. Am I not signed in? Maybe I'm not signed no in. Uh, on on my uh, my thing, I need to. Where are you looking for for way of the sun soul? Oh, uh, the a specific thing or the these the skill that you get at level I want to say eleven. Eleven. Uh, searing sunburst. Yeah. Green that's orb of light that erupts into a devastating explosion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that feels like it's very spammable. Um, no, never. Well, if you if you look at it, um, it doesn't have like really any requirements to it, so to speak. Um, for what you have to do, like, uh, come on, people. I just want to get into my account. Why will you not let me into my account? I already have an account. I have this, this account. This is why Nathan can't have nice things. This is why I can't have nice things. No, I, uh... Oh, maybe maybe I'm just signed in. Okay, let me try this. If I can sign in, I can... I can... Find out if I actually... Oh... Man, con. Let's see if that works. Oh, I guess. Okay, I don't. I don't know what's wrong here, but anyway. Everything, all the things are wrong. What? What the? What the? Okay, I don't know why I'm not signed in. Uh, but anyway, <sighs> what? What you can do with Searing Sunburst is it creates this gigantic ball of light that deals some uh, pretty considerable damage and has, like, no inherent, like, key cost to it. And you could just, like, do it as a standard action. So you could just do it every round. And then there's this whole thing where if you wanted to, you could spend some key points to make it stronger... And, um, 
once you get to uh, a certain level, they had to like cap how <laughs> many times you could do that because uh, if you if you didn't, it would kind of one shot almost anything. It's um. Here we go. Uh, do, 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 do you choose? Okay. As an action, you magically create an orb and hurl it at a point you choose within 150 feet where it erupts into a sphere of radiant light for a brief but deadly instant. Each creature in that 20-foot radius sphere must succeed on a constitution saving throw or take 2d6 radiant damage. A creature doesn't need to make a save if the creature is behind total cover. Or that is opaque. You can increase the sphere's damage by spending key points. Each point you spend to a maximum of three increases the damage by two point two d six. There is okay. Uh, now that that doesn't have like an inherent key cost, but you can spend up to three key. But by the time you do that, you're talking eight d six radiant damage to all targets inside of a twenty foot radius sphere. Yeah, they have to make, and it's uh. It's not half damage, though. It, they either make the throw mm. or they don't. If they make the throw, nothing happens. If they, make they the don't throw. take the damage. If they make the constitution saving throw. Right. Right. There's no there's no uh, take half damage language here. So. Right. Right, 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 right. Um, I just keep thinking, like, what happens when the goblins... Like, the little goblin horde comes in. It's like, we're going to overwhelm you with our numbers. And then the damn Sun Soul monk comes along. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, well, I got bad news for you, kiddo. I'm just going to throw orbs of light at you. <laughs> from from nowhere. Um and depending and depending on how you've built your character, uh, that Constitution saving throw might be pretty substantial. You might have to overcome mm -hmm. that quite a bit. the The only thing I see as a real downside, though, is that if you have um, allies that are in there, technically they would also take that radiant damage. Yeah, it's just everything, every creature. But when it got to that, the the thing that they get at um, like third level, they're they're starting level two, where basically you can you can do the same basic actions as flurry of blows, but as a ranged attack with radiant damage. Uh, I was like, I like that too. <laughs> I like the idea that because it it basically functions the same way. Uh, you could use it as like an offhanded attack. You can uh, spend key points to do it a second time. Um, there's just a lot of really neat stuff they get. Uh, and then I think that they have the Radiant Shield that they get at a really high level, too. That's pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, I thought, how how neat would it be if you had just, like, a a flying bird that's just hurling down orbs of light at people <laughs> seems seems pretty effective I think that would work um, but if I made another monk that would probably be the kind of monk that I made uh, there you go I would try to make I would try to make it a better like a traditionally better monk though than Rembrandt because <laughs> he's not actually built uh, the way a monk is usually built but um but no, I really like the idea of trying to try out some of the other classes. I almost dared to think about developing a um a magic class uh, which is a little bit uh scary because the the magic system uh makes me scared uh those circles, man. I I I gotta figure out how circles work. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm a jerk when it comes to circles. The the thing about it is. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And just separately, apparently Sappy's getting married to Lips now. Second marriage that we're talking about in this game tonight. Um, good job, guys. 
We did it. We did it, folks. There truly can be love in RimWorld. <laughs> they better not break up, though, because that's going to be real annoying. What RimWorld needs again. now <laughs> is love. <laughs> Sweet love. Stop before you get a copyright strike. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're not on YouTube. <laughs> it's parody. <laughs> parody a lot of people. You can't get me now. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't um, stop me now. Have such a good time. Oh, that's right. I wanted to be a wizard, but I wanted to be a necromancer. <laughs> a necro. See, I want to. If I if I'm doing a necromancer, I want to do a druid necromancer because then then they're the balance of life and death. And that's fun. Oh yeah. No, I just wanted to be a necromancer. <laughs> a straight a straight up necromancer who has like designs of like glory and power that thought that like having an undead army would be pretty sweet in order to get there. <laughs> like that was the kind of necromancer I wanted to be. Just like, hey, you know what? I could use an army. An undead army wouldn't question me very much. I think <laughs> they have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but again, like I thought of a necromancer as not being like an evil necromancer, just like um, just like an evil curious necromancer, <laughs> like one that one that flirted with the idea of being evil, but didn't necessarily outright do it all the time. <laughs> like had had generally maybe good intentions, but also seemed to be pretty self serving at the end. <laughs> I thought that that would be fun. Uh, Lord knows that is the kind of uh, spellcaster I would make. Um, but yeah, I wanted to try some different classes and stuff like that. Um, but uh, yeah, my campaign would be basically uh, going through probably the DM's guild <laughs> to find uh, level-specific campaign modules and such and probably just running that as a series of modules that you would go through. That, or the very general, uh, you, you're in a town, you know how the map of the Forgotten Realms works, where do you want to go? <laughs> we'll figure out if something happens along the way. <laughs> where are you going? Random encounters. It's basically, you know what it would end up being? It would be the roguelike version. <laughs> Callback. <laughs> roguelike D&D. &D. Literally, you start. You you have a starting point. Figure it out. If you die, you die. Campaign over. <laughs> All done. That that is. It, hey, you know what? That would be an interesting experiment, though. Roguelike D and D. Just like no 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 rules, random generated. Off the top of your head. I'm sure people have done it before, but. I'm saying that's probably what you're going to well, get with me. Like D&D? &D. I mean, you die. Oh, yeah. You die for realsies. I am. Uh... <laughs> you die in the game, you die. In... <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, that's pull extreme D&D. Pull, uh, pull out the pistol for some uh, Russian roulette D&D. &D. Yeah, Russian roulette D&D, &D, yeah. If you roll a one, you get shot in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Critical fail at life. Yeah, the, the the revolver has twenty shots, and there's one bullet. <laughs> That's the critical fail. And there's... I'm making a really nice rec room right now. I built a billiards table out of silver because I'm just that expensive. Yep. That's terrific. It, it, I'm, I'm assuming you're still talking about home. Rim World. The... Yes, I don't have a rec room in real life. I made it's made of granite <laughs> walls and it's got a granite tile floor because I'm again that expensive. Also, there's a ton of granite around me, so I've just been making tons of granite block. Basically, uh, basically, imagine if Rimworld were D and D. That's the campaign I would end up having. I mean, there is um, the gear screen you have is very RPG esque. Your head. You have all your slots in oh, front yeah. of you, like you would have in an RP. Oh, um, yeah. That's a mod, though. That's right. a mod. There's. Did I mention there's like 14,000 mods in You didn't, but I think I remember that aspect of it. Yeah, there's there's about, there's about 14,000 mods. 
It's a lot of in room world because necessary. And you can get through all of them instantaneously. So you you you've gotten through them probably during this uh, live show. All fourteen thousand. I yes, absolutely. That was pretty impressive. Uh okay. So anyway, uh, I don't know what we've learned tonight. Uh, I don't think we've actually Not learned. Much. We've learned nothing, uh, which is our. We, we, I learned how to make the audio input work correctly on OBS. Hey, there you go. Which is good. I feel like the part that we unfortunately cut out that people didn't hear was where DC went to C2E2 and uh, and got pictures with people. Which, um... Oh, yeah, we did leave it. Yeah. That's unfortunate. That was, like, the yeah, most... Yeah, C2E2 was a lot of fun. So. Yeah. That was, like, the most interesting uh, conversation of the night, and uh, no one got to hear it because the audio... <laughs> 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 so, um... Yeah, we're succeeding at life over here at Delve. <laughs> Glad. No. I mean, I've seen pictures of donkeys with pants I never thought I would see. Yep. Right. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. You never know what you're going to get here on this show. And uh, I think that that's sort of both both our, uh, our blessing and our curse. Cause <laughs> so... So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, basically what have we learned on this episode of Delve? We've learned that there are indeed pictures of donkeys wearing pants, uh, that uh, a 7x7 seven seven alignment grid is evil and, uh, and beyond the laws of nature, uh, that, uh, that you should uh, be very careful about multi-classing in D&D, uh, that uh, this is the first of the Delve-like podcasts. We've learned oh, that much. Uh, and, uh, and that if somebody ha comes on your show who has an actually interesting, uh, story about their life, chances are the audio will not catch it, and, uh, people will just have to use their imagination in the future. <laughs> and, uh, Alex <laughs> is playing RimWorld. That's, <laughs> that's what she... And has killed off some ducks. And there were a couple marriages in Rib World, so hey, you know what? That's a that's a full slate of stuff right there. We really Yeah, that's a whole whole thing. We ran the gambit. Uh alright everybody. Um Uh what, what did we learn anything else? I don't think we learned anything else. Um Wilson is broken. <laughs> so go. <laughs> Don't don't go in for that. Um, don't don't look up organ harvesting <laughs> online, because <laughs> uh, apparently ASMR is a big thing <laughs> regarding that. Uh, yeah, ducks bad. Don't don't do things. Ducks with bad. That. Ducks ducks bad. Generally, a good thing to remember. Ducks bad. They really are. Don't look up stuff about ducks. You're not gonna be. You're not gonna be happy with what you find. Uh, and uh, and Nathan really wants to be a necromancer, not in a game. All right, folks. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> and uh, you oh, know what? Okay. <laughs> Did you have anything to add to that, Alex? No, nope, just good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. We we did it. Thank we you it. to all the people who joined us on this episode. Thank you to Drunk Paul. Thank you to DC. And thank you to Alex. And thank you to I wasn't me. sleeping for once. You were not sleeping. This is the first one this ep this uh, year where you were not asleep. <laughs> and of course, accurate. Accurate. <laughs> and and it, of course, is the first one where I had audio problems so we could hear you for the first 20 Yeah, minutes. we didn't need to do nothing. Yeah, hey, that worked out perfectly well. All right, everybody, uh, from all of us here at Delve, 
Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, and uh, we will see you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Woohoo! Bye.